everyone and welcome to the final week of RSC 11, at least in regular play. There's still the All-Star Show matches next week, but in terms of playoffs, this is the start of the end. Master begins today. We've had four, we've got two left to go. And we started off, of course, in the playing stage, the first match for tonight. It's going to be Gladiators taking on Fearless Alpha. It's going to be a wild one and joining me for it is Sir Winnelot. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty excited for this. This is a pretty uh, high level of play and uh, like you said, it's the beginning of, beginning of the end and that does seem to create some excitement sometimes. You all want to be a part of it and this is the opportunity to do so. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, indeed. The first thing on the list to do is look at this play-in schedule. You can see what's going to be going on today. Gladiators Fearless Alpha, the winner of this first match, will go on to play Rias Legion later on. And then we go up to the upper bracket with Dogon taking in Hades. The other three matches will go down tomorrow. And yes, there's, of course, the six matches of play and then the rest will go on on Saturday. It's three days in a row for Master. They don't get a day break like the other tiers. And with that, we can move on into the team stats and... Swinlord, is, is there anything in particular you're seeing about these two teams coming in? They were the lower seeds, of course. We're starting it off with the, the lower teams, so fifth and sixth. But is there anything that's jumping out of you? Well, we have to look at just the difference in goals for and goals against. Um, for me, that's always a telltale sign of uh, how many you're going to score. I mean, we've been wrong before, specifically me. But uh, going forward with that, I mean, the goals for 151. 185, uh, Fearless Alpha, a little bit on the lower end of that. And you, you just look at the same thing with goals against. They're also the lower end of that. So they play solid defense and they uh, play the old Italian style of soccer, winning games 1-0, I guess. But uh, look at the saves and demos, Bar. You got to look at those and, and have an opinion about that. Yeah, you, we're going to go back to the Fearless Alpha having maybe more saves because of the more defensive team. They have had the, the worst goal difference and... They do have less demos. Fearless or Fort Templar have, uh, have some very good demo players in here. The other thing I noticed about them, as you said about the goals, they are the, the lowest wins in the final 12 of the, the teams that qualify to the, the final stages. And they have the sixth best goal difference. So it's definitely looking like they can they can score some goals for Templar. And with the player stats we're going here. The, the number one thing I was looking at it before this game is Skiz on 75 goals. You know where that puts them in the tier to win a lot? I would love to know. I'm a stats guy. How how up there is he? He is first. He is tied oh, my first goodness. with 75 goals. So he is the man for Gladiators tonight. That's amazing to see. He's actually averaging over a goal a game. So, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. When he's out there, uh, he gets goals. And you know what? For me, uh, I love to see that. And uh, when we look at it uh, completely from the aspect of production... That's who you like to see, your veteran guy up there just getting it done. Yeah, absolutely. Some other things I noticed, Bossy Lassie and Jazz were top 10 in assists, so he's got some good players behind him. And Genzo comes in with the top MVPs in the tier. So he's really high saves, which gets him a lot of points, but high across the board if he's getting up to, to that many MVPs. I think it... Let me try and quickly check on I mean, it. It's 23. He's played 68 games, and in about a quarter of them, he has been the no a third, if I can count. About a third of the games he plays, he is the MVP. So looks like he should be quite the player for Alpha here. Yeah, sometimes it comes down to how good is your best player on the day of. It sounds like he's pretty consistent, but then on the other side of it is, can we stop the bleeding on the other side? Can we? postpone their good and better players from doing damage it's not always about giving them a goose egg on the score sheet it's about limiting the damage and we'll see if they are able to do that today as some of the players aren't quite ready yet bar but uh that is going to be definitely a challenge uh for the uh the other guys today yeah absolutely and i think we have some predictions on the board here i think the other thing to to note about these predictions is that fearless alpha are the reigning champions genzo and sibo both on Fearless Alpha when they won it last season and oh, wow. uh, rather that, that makes this a rather more bold that I've gone for Gladiators 3-1. I'm going to say the reigning champions go out at the first hurdle in these planes and that the Gladiators with Starman Skiz, the GM as well of course, can't forget get that. He's not only a great player, great GM for this Fort Templar franchise. He's going to take it but you're backing the, the reigning champions. You're going to say they advance further. 
Yeah, sometimes I'm a guy who goes off of instinct, and sometimes you choose the team before I choose them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and sometimes you got to just go with the rain champs. And it's raining today. The forecast calls for rain in 99% of our area. As we have players getting in the ring here, the countdown's about to be on bar. I'm excited. Absolutely. And there's one final thing about this match that makes it a whole different spanner in the works. Who's playing in this alpha matchup? Not the main roster, it's Genzo Lutix and oh, wow. not the other main player, Siva. It's fellow Northern Irishman, Minty. He's come in as the sub, signed in about week five. He's played one series for them and now he's on the star stage of the play -ins. He's going to have a very interesting time adapting to this high pace single elimination format and he's playing to win a lot. Yep, let's hope he does well. He has a good beat off the start there. Um, but yeah, maybe Minty is someone to look out for, Bar. Those are the players that can really shine for you. A good flick off the gate. He gets the demo. Oh, he does it. He gets the save. What a big play by Shkezi. I can't believe that. That's a really good start to this game, Bar. And I'm already excited. Minty leaves that into the middle. It's going to be a shot. And another great save by Boss. Luce is turning on this. It's going to be off the sidewall. And it's great to be back in the booth with you, Bar, I have to say. But this is looking to be absolutely amazing play off the start. Bayless Alpha almost immediately proving that despite not having their main roster, they are still the team that got more wins in league play. But Gladiators have wrestled back the pressure for the moment, and Lugenzo will take it away from them and push it down. Minty with a good follow up. It's up into the blue box, but sweet boss, last he will get it away. Lutik's trying to make something happen for Genzo, but now Jazz has a counter attack opportunity. Minty will deny. And Get it away from any rebound attempts. Skiz will try to make something happen from it anyway, though. The double's going to be a little bit awkward, and indeed Minty will find a relatively easy clear. Both sides playing at a high pace in this opening minute and a half. This definitely is the master tier to win a lot. It's going to be a raucous fight all throughout this best of five. Yeah, you can't deny it now. We're here, we see the pace of play. This is the master tier for a reason. They don't make a lot of mistakes. There's not a lot of room out there. As I say that, someone gets demo on it. It's going to be almost done that it's not. But this is what you come for. This is what you play for. This is where you want to be as a player. And it's exciting to see these guys going out and giving their all. But the question remains, can anybody break the deadlock? No. Minty, the substitute, coming in strong again. Clears the ball over his goal line. Gets off the sidewall. Back in. Jazz got to make nice. No, oh, smart boy. Skizzy there. Again, I don't know what you're calling him, but I like the skizzy dizzy. And he's out there. A good save again by Minty. Minty's playing well, Bar. He's uh, he's out there playing well. He is indeed. At the moment, he's top of the Felix Alpha scoreboard. And top of that, he also seems to be facing some ping issues. So he's playing through everything. At the moment, he's on green. Oh. But it shouldn't matter. It did matter indeed, because both Minty and Lutix died. And Lutix somehow got up to deny that one from Bossy Lassie. That almost looked like a certain goal for Gladiators to take the lead. But brilliant start from the Alpha side. Oh, I thought for sure we were about to celebrate the first goal here. It's going to be Jackson! Oh. Jackson! Too slow to get past Skiz. One player left. It's going to be an open net for Jazz. It's and it. it's slow for Fearless Alpha. Well, we may have lost some comms here for a second on the stream. We're going to try and get that back in. Um, amazing goal here, nonetheless. We're going to just continue as normal and let our back office take care of that, I think, Bar. But uh, at either said it's 2 nothing with a minute and a half left, and they're looking strong. Indeed, the two Brits. From gladiators on the board and i also point out that it was st david's day the patron saint of wales so maybe jazz is feeling a little bit more up for it after that one it looks like they might be pegged one back here but no alpha cannot 
get it into the back of the net, but still Alpha will push. Menti looks for his first oh. of the series, and he gets it. He pulls one back for Alpha, and this is not going to be quite so easy for Gladiators as they thought. Nope, not at all. We have a game. A minute and 15 seconds left. And you remind me to tell you something about that St. Patrick's guy, okay? As an Italian myself, we have to Saint have a David. conversation. St. David. St. David, okay, good, for good, Wales. good. Yes, for Wales. I was going to wonder. I was wondering. Uh, that being said, we can get back to the action. Uh, we almost had our first fight there, Bar. That was close. We made up pretty quick, though. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a sign of good friendship. Uh, as we move into the next round of the next round of this game here, it is a whole different game with 2-1. And it is now anyone's game as Lux is going to be up. It's going to be in the middle. Jazz makes a good save. He gets off to the right side. Boss is going down. He's trying to steal boost. He doesn't get there. Genzo gets there first. Genzo's going to get over to the right wall. He's looking to pinch this out. He gets a good pinch. Just not past Jazz, but it's okay because Skizzy Meister, the man himself, is up. Lutix is going to get this left side of the Minty. Boss is going to be down really quickly here. That's well done. And they do clear their lines. Genzo's going to be off the back wall. He does well. It's going to be a flip up. Oh! Oh, Boy, that was close, wasn't it? Alpha want to get their equalizer here. They got 30 seconds left. It's just not happening for them. They're out shooting six to four at this point, but Gladiators are holding their lines. They're holding on to this one goal lead. Jazz will just give it away to Lutix here, though he's got loads of space to work with. He chases his down, but Austin Lassie will deny anything coming through. Genso with a brilliant pinch into the middle. Minty's going to oh. be there, but he can't put it on target. Lutix keeps it alive, but doesn't have a lot behind it. Jazz will take it away. Only one second left. But Genso oh, sure not! Sure and Jazz gets it away, Minty keeps it alive though, surely Skiz will kill it, but he just gives it back to Genzo, a fearless alpha, who somehow gets it back to Genzo, somehow gets it back to Oh my god, Bar, we're both just screaming nonsense up here, oh wow, what, it was that? <laughs> Hard to the equalize! They got close in like five opportunities on zero seconds and it just didn't work. Oh my word. <laughs> oh, it was the first one was crazy. It was just floating near the goal. They get it off the crossbar. Up for the second opportunity, a save. Then cleared, kept it back up. Up for a third opportunity, another save off the goal line and gets it straight down right in front of a looming minty. Ready to bury that. Boy, that's as exciting as Rocket League gets right there. Oh, Fearless Alpha going to be gutted with that one oh, that they yeah. don't get back into it, but sometimes that's the way it goes, and you have to get right back into it. The best of five format can be ruthless here, and you don't make chances like those counting. Gladiators might start running away with it. They've got to keep their heads in the game, and something that might suggest they did, they all readied up immediately. They're fired up by that so, so close loss, and they're going to try and take it straight back to the Gladiators on Forbidden Temple. I really do love this map as well. It gives me my zen. Sometimes I just let this map be on while I'm trying to fall asleep at night, and maybe that's too much information, but it is a beautiful map, Bar. It is, and we do seem to have Fearless Alpha member missing from the lobby. Gladiators have remained in. The timer will start, so <laughs> I will guess we'll have to try and remake this lobby. They are joining back, but yeah, we have to remake False Start here on Forbidden Temple, and you know, maybe that, that gives some more time for for the, the, the gladiators to, to settle back down after they almost give away that equalizing goal at the end of game one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And you know what? Just as this map brought a lot of zen, we get our first stressful moment of the series for real, isn't it? Um, I'm assuming we just rejoin with the same password, yeah? Murray Sky in the, in the background, I think, has, yeah, has no remade. So yeah, the lobby is back up. We'll wait for all of us and all of the players involved to, to get back into it. It shouldn't take too long. And indeed, they are joining back already. So that might be the quickest server restart I've ever had here in RSC. The players are, are just raring to go. <laughs> That was really good, and yeah, after that last game, I'll be wasting no time getting back into here, to be honest. This is going to be quite the match. As the countdown comes on, the waterfall in the background, the sky is looking nice, the sky in our background is doing his job, and I'm out of puns, so we got to get down to business. Here they are. They're off. What a strong kickoff off to the right wall, and Skizzy Meister himself is going to be there. Jazz is going to get a good touch here. He's got to be careful. Uh, they do get it out, Boss re recognizing the danger there. And they are getting off an early goal lead. Potentially, you know, they get a good save. And Minty recollects into his back left. 
And it's good that they uh, escaped the first 10 seconds there. Um, is it not, Bar? Yeah, they don't concede anything just yet. And now they regain the pressure for themselves. Skiers looking for Bossy Lassie, but Lutex gets in the way. And you know, we'll give it straight back to the Gladiators. Yeah, he's going to try and push it. He wins the 50 for Bossy Lassie to push on even further. Looks for the double into the middle, but Genzo's ready for it. Now Jazz will knock it to the backward. It's going to waterfall down for him, but Minty with a good read on it. In fact, he's got it central for wow. Lutex, but nothing behind that shot. And Bossy Lassie can collect once more. Jazz is going to try and push and Minty's going to try and shut him down. Lots of early shutdowns in this opening minute. Both teams looking to restrict any space for the opposition. Lutex has found some yeah. here, though gets it on target and scares with a brilliant save. Minty keeps it alive. And it's a oh! double oh! stop Genzo. Jazz was definitely going to clear the out, but Genzo just eliminates him from the play. And on top of that, just smacks it straight home. Brilliant from the Belgian. That was amazing. He says, hey, no, 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 no. This is my space. Restricted flying zone. Get out. And he sneaks it into the close post. Amazing bar. Huge start for Fearless Alpha. They know how close they were to getting back into game one. And they're roaring into game number two. Lotus almost makes it too, but Jazz knocks it onto the backboard. Minty keeps the attack alive, but Bossy Lassie will push it away. Fearless Alpha are so, so ready for the rest of this series. So they're trying to batter down this gladiator's door. Jazz's 50 is going to drop down, but Lutex has to wait as a last man and invites some more pressure from gladiators. Bossy Lassie has it in the middle. Minty has to get there, and he does not get there. Jazz makes up for getting demoed earlier and gets gladiators back level. And that's a sign of a great player. I mean, he does get a little bit of help from the bump on Boss on the back end of Minty, but that's what a great player does. Hey, boys, sorry about that. I was maybe a little bit slow getting to that ball. Let me go make up for it. And he does. He buries that one home. Game two looking like it's going to be a very close affair. Fearless Alpha almost trying to keep the pressure up. Then a double yeah. whiff will come out from each team. Eventually, it ends up being Genzo with possession of the ball. He has it into the middle, but neither teammate committed with him means that Adi to get a relatively easily clear, and once again, Bossy Lassie gets it away, but struggling to completely eliminate the danger. Fearless Alpha doing well to keep it in these danger zones. Skiers almost gets dunked out, but does enough in that 59. Minty with a whiff leaves it to Genzo once more, and he has Lutix waiting this time. He will get it in the middle. Lutix is free oh. jump, but he can't quite make it work, and Gladiators will get it away oh, once more. On. level. For the moment, but Gladiators are soaking up a lot of pressure. They almost get something on the counter, but straight back to defense. Yeah, I was really excited for a second there. They had double demos, and it just mean, it felt like they just got out of their end a little bit slow. No counter, and now they're back into their own end, and there's a lot of pressure on them. Um, if the pressure keeps going like this bar, I don't know how long they can uh, hold on this, right? Well, again, wow. they try to catch Vila spell for Ori, and again, they just possession back straight away even though Genzo didn't have any boost to make that one work but Skiers will just give it straight back that's not a great touch and that's not the sort of touch you're looking for when you have been playing so much defense you're trying to make everything count and push when you have the opportunity but Felix Alpha just keep being alive and Minty's shot almost goes all the way in but doesn't quite stay under the crossbar and Felix Alpha find themselves unlucky to not be ahead at the moment. They do go ahead here, though. Genzo gets the second. Minty with the assist, and Gladiators just could not hold it down. It was too much pressure from Fearless Alpha. Uh, so much pressure. Good bumping through on the rotations, and uh, you know, I believe they deserve to be up 2-1 in this one. Yeah, they've clearly been the better team. Gladiators had a couple chances on the counter, but even then, they've been struggling, and Fearless Alpha have done well to come back from game one and definitely look better here as they did at the end of game one and here goes Minty looking to try and build on their one goal lead gets the flip reset but doesn't have enough momentum behind him to get back to the ball Genzer's going to pick this one up but Skiers is waiting patiently almost a bit of a miscommunication with Jazzo and it does allow Lutex in Minty is trying to race ahead of Fossilassi but the Swede did enough on that 50 and Still, Gladiators have to defend. Skiers gets it away, but Lutix is waiting. Jazz with a brilliant interception this time, though. Surely they have something off of this play. Skiers will keep it away from Genzo, but Minty with a good clearance, and Alpha once again goes straight back down to the blue half. Four Templar side are really struggling to keep themselves in this game number two, but as long as it stays to one goal, then they will have their chances. Here's one for Bossy Lassie, but Lutix has very patiently waited for that one. 
He did wait patiently, and the, the question now is going to be, are they going to get one more chance? There's a lot of demos happening on the field right now. These teams obviously don't like each other. Maybe some bad blood history, I don't know. Or maybe they like each other a lot. Yeah, there's another demo, and they are you are right, Bar. They are struggling to clear their lines and keep the pressure. Um, and that is causing an issue, especially with the 20-second mark coming upon us. Are they going to be able to get out in time? Or are they going to be able to keep Charlie. it to one? Oh! No, the counterattack's on. 10 seconds left. Are we going to get more madness at the end of this game, Bar? I don't know. It's starting to get a little intense. Genza with the expert control to take more time off the clock, but Bossy oh. eventually wrestles it back. Minty oh. drops it off and does! And he's excited off of the crossbar and in. It does not stay away from the Fearless Alpha net. They do what Fearless Alpha feared to last time, and they make the chances with the Dying Embers point. They have equalized. Oh, they dominated all game, and to concede with three seconds left is just heartbreaking. It's a big kickoff here. Let's see if they can keep it up. It is up, but I don't know if it's going to be up for too long. Can he get the double? Don't get the double. Oh, 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 my word. No, I'm not trying to count you, but Minty will just send oh, it to the grind. Two ecstatic zero second play so far in this series, but neither of them quite go in. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I don't know how much I can handle that. It's rather intense because Minty's going to be up here. Great save by Skizze. And he does get it back down into his own end for some safekeeping. He does get the boost as well. Lux is going to be at a boost. Oh, he fakes! And now he pitches it out. Minty could be up here just to keep the pressure. Really good read by our boy in the left side there. And Jazz is going to get his on net. Oh, Genzo with the save. Bar, this is great Rocket League. Really is. Jazz is really playing up to the level that he knows he can do. He's three goals so far in this series and was looking to complete his hatcher here. He's got another chance one for Gladiators here, but Genzo this time will get it away. Everyone trying to elevate their gameplay when it matters most here in the plans. He's going to right by Lord Dixon. Oh, it's oh. own goals, but Genzo saves his flushes. That should have been a 2-0 for Gladiators, but it does not go over the line and Alpha get away with one. Oh, I would say they got away with a whole millimeter there. That's the only place it could have gone. Anywhere else, that's in the net. Very lucky, but are they out of the that's woods the yet? That's part. Oh, panic and silly on the goal line here. They get it over to the left side. Jazz, he scores. No, he doesn't. Benji takes the save. But now it's back on that. It's going to be top corner. It's the same. No, it's in. Oh, Genzo with the save. Bar, this is as close as they can do without scoring a goal. And you know the oldest tale of the book. Save at one end, goal at the other. Let's hope this doesn't come back to haunt them. But it's been great saves, Bar. What can you do? Indeed, Genzo is the other man on two goals this match. And he's also proving that he can do work on his defense. Can he finish it off with the hat-trick? Oh, yes! Oh! No! With the free jump will deny Fearless Alpha from equalizing the series. Oh my word, this has been an absolutely ridiculous state of affairs so far. And look at no! he's surely gonna get it out no chance. He gets in the way, gets demoed for his troubles, but he did enough. And this overtime just keeps on trundling into the third minute we go, and still neither team can stick their claim. Well, blood, sweat, and tears here. That's all you can give. And there's been some demos, people putting their body on the line, and that's exactly what you want to see. No one, oh, completely fearless out there, and you love to see it. Uh, tell the, tell my loved ones, if I die today, that this game is the best Rocket League game I've seen so far. What an amazing matchup. And there is going to be an opportunity coming shortly here, as this game was lost in the midfield. It's off the back, but, and the counterattack's on, but Lussie's going to get it safely over to the left side. And they're back up. Bossy's going to be over into the middle. He gets the reset. A little bit late on that, but it's a great save by Lux, who's waiting for help. Skizzy puts it back on net. Genzo with the ball back out. And this is going to be a good place to get the ball out of their end. They don't for very long. Lux keeps it in the midfield again. Oh, another big demo. And Genzo beats him to the ball. He's going to get boost. And the game is getting lost in the midfield a little bit here at Bar, but that does happen after the amount of action we've had. Yeah, they've finally slowed down just a touch. It's still... Yeah. If any mistakes come through, you will be punished, but for the moment it's a little bit slower here again. No real chance for Alpha to strike. Minty will push another one forward, but Jazz comfortably deals with this one. It's a little bit too close to Genzo, though, and he will find Minty. He smacks it off of the top corner. Now the counter might be on, but Lutex will regain control before that can happen. And Alpha look to try and maintain his pressure. Bossy Lassie takes it away, but Lutex will have possession. He now gives it away to Jazz, but Genzo with a brilliant interception. Means the Skiz has to try and make something work from this right-hand side. He's got a double off the ceiling, but nothing behind it. Lutex trying to find a teammate, oh. but 
Jazz is alert to the danger and now he gets to follow up Pinch as well. He's got space to work with on the right hand side. What can he do? Not too much with it in the end as Genzo well placed to deal with it. Skiz is going to try and look for the snapshot but again Lutex is there. Both teams positioning really well to deny the opposing advances and means that we are stuck in a bit of a stalemate. We're into the fifth minute now. Both teams are really trying their damned hardest. Jazz will push it but again Genzo is in the way. The team's positioning is just too much. Genzo actually sends a flip reset from wow. that. Almost got up past Skiz. Brilliant creativity from Genzo there but still not quite enough. Not quite enough yet, and these overtimes usually come down to something a little silly. Once it's been to the four minute mark, it's uh, no longer glory that can separate these guys. It's going to be a stroke of luck or maybe something amazing. But uh, I found more often than not, it's a silly play, something just a little bit unawkwardly going their way. And uh, we get to the five minute mark. I think we need to remind that uh, these are not five minute cap overtimes, correct? No, no, of course not. We're not in a, an Indian tournament. These teams can, can go Good. on forever here to win a lot. But Excellent. Was, was well, let me just cancel my 5 o'clock because <laughs> this is looking to go the distance of the aisles off the post. Oh, they got to clear it. Oh, he does a good half fake challenge. Bar, we're not going anywhere yet. Oh, my goodness. This play is so solid defensively. The rotations are so tight. No one taking much risk in the offensive end that this could go on for a very long time. Buckle your seatbelts, everybody, because it's going to be over. Oh, it's out the post bar. I'm shaking in my seat. I can't believe these players. Is there a point bar where you start to just calm down in the game? The overtime doesn't even mean anything anymore. You're just, you're just like a zombie. That's the sort of thing that causes those mistakes in these massive overtimes like this, and that's why both teams are trying to play. Maybe that little bit more conservative. They oh! can happen, but that is definitely not a mistake. This is Fearless Alpha equalizing in the series. Genzo to Lutex, Lutex to Minty. He absolutely buries it, and the substitute does not care that he's only played one series for Fearless Alpha. He is showing up on the day. Oh, Bar, your energy just gets me going every time I'm in the booth with you. But when there's an overtime like this, Bar, I mean, what do you do as a caster? You could almost just sit and watch, and what a play at the end. And it's exactly what Fearless Alpha ordered from the doctor. This is what they needed to get back in. And you lose that one, and your mentals have got to be shot. It's a really tough loss to come across, but you also have to realize that Gladiators did so well to get back into it. They were looking like they were just going to be, be opposed and opposed by Fearless Alpha, but they, they showed that that flash of brilliance from game one from Alpha is, is not going to be all of it. Gladiators played toe-to-toe -to -toe here. They got the five-minute overtime. But don't forget, they equalized on three seconds to earn right. themselves that chance. And however heart, however heart draining it must be to lose a five-minute overtime in a single elimination moment like this, Gladiators know that they've already won a game. They took it to Fearless Alpha that game, and they do not have to be the ones to roll over. Both teams are going to keep fighting. Absolutely, and you almost have to wonder if it hurts Fearless Alpha's mentality because they gave everything they got and they barely scathed away with the win. The question now is, are they able to keep it up? Yeah, it takes a big mental toll pushing for so long throughout a match, and they were the better team, but it wasn't by much. Gladiators kept themselves in it. They repeatedly had chances in that overtime often on the counter, but if they collapse like this on the kickoff, no, not quite, Genzo doesn't quite hit the target, no scares, almost own goals, but I think Masulasi did deny him there, almost a ridiculous goal for Fearless Alpha, the sort of goal that should have won another time like that, another one goes off the corner, but this time it stays in, and Fearless Alpha are not ready for another five minutes of the time, they want to get it done in regulation this time, and they start off really strong with a goal in with 16 seconds. That's exactly how they needed to start here, and we do see a lot of opening goals in Rocket League. As we look forward to this next four and a half minutes of action, a big demo to open up the play here. Can they equalize again? We will find out. Skizzy's up. Genzo with the good interception. Boss is going to get there first. He does. He pings it into the corner. Minty leaves boost for his partner as he clears the ball. They do cut it off at the midfield, but a little bit awkward. Boss had to be good there, and he was. This is going to be as good as it gets, guys, so don't go anywhere. But it is looking to me like Fearless Alpha is starting to pick up their play bar. Yeah, this is maybe where it gets even tougher for Gladiators. Oh. When you lose the clutch over time, you can see it immediately in the next game. And with your first good chance, you don't get it in. They could be sitting at a one-goal deficit for quite a while here. 
and they're going to have to try and push through the mountain that is Fearless Alpha. They've got a big task up ahead of them, but still equal in the series. There's still four minutes left to play here on Sovereign Heights, and you just can't let it get to them too much as long as they keep it to one, as long as they keep themselves in it. Then they might have a chance to bring themselves level scores, and that's exactly what Scares does. He scores once again, this time Jazz with the assist, and that is brilliant. They do not get their heads down and out after losing the overtime. They stay in it, and they do equalize. That's an amazing thing to see. That means we're getting more good Rocket League. And you can notice there uh, a couple of double commits, but uh, they actually uh, they actually left a bit of space one time, and they punished on that space. So it is imperative that these guys do not give any more space in their own in their own end there, because they're on it like white on rice there, Bar. Absolutely brilliant. Capitalization from Gladiators. They might be going into the lead here. Scares looking for his press this time. Minty gets in the way. Bossy Lassie cannot do anything with the rebound, but Gladiators trying to get themselves fired up by that equalizer and put themselves in the lead. Not have to equalize on three seconds like last time, but Fearless Alpha also desperate to not concede here. Both teams know the stakes at this stage in the series. You lose this series and you go out. Your season is done. And one game loss here in game three. Oh. Change everything. Bossy Lossy should have put one on, but flies past the ball. Fearless Alpha can retake up possession. That, that was a pretty good opportunity. Um, but it doesn't feel like this is what the game deserves. You know what this game deserves, Bar? It deserves more of us screaming in the booth in an OT match. And I can feel it in my bones, Bar. In my bones, I can feel it. There's going to be a chance. Oh, it's going to be up the left wall again, though. They do recover just in time as they recollect and go for the counterattack. The ball is up. No boost, though. So Lutix is going to be there first. And they try to get back out of their end. Nope. Ping back in. And the pressure starts to mount as Minty's going to take a good touch here. It's into the middle awkwardly. Lutix is definitely, definitely rotating right there. He was—he knew exactly where the ball was going to be. He got there fast. Minty puts it on net. What a save. And they ping it out. Bar, that was really close as well. But expected save at this level. Yeah. Gladiators alerts to the fact that Minty can definitely play up to this level as the substitute. He showed it in that overtime. But still, oh. Gladiators cannot keep them away. This time, it's Genzo the Lutix. They don't need Minty. They can work on all facets as a team. There's op opportunities for them everywhere. They know each other inside and out. And Gladiators cannot deal with the pressure. Nope, and that's exactly what happened. They were rotating and rotating, biding for their time, and then they got an opportunity again. No one committing in the middle, and they get absolutely crushed. What a great shot and play that was. Spears almost with the immediate response. He's trying to step up to show why he is the top scorer in Masters so far with four shots, but only one has found its way through the Fearless Alpha defense. And might have to call upon Jazz to get back on the scoreboard here. He's trying to find Skiers on the right, trying to get back on the assist board, but Skiers' long clearance will be met by Minty. Jazz keeps the pressure on. He's got in the middle for Bosilassi, but Lutex so quick to get up, spot the danger, and get it away. Fearless Alpha hold on to their lead. That was really close. It could have went anywhere. He just had to guess. Like he's going top bins. I'll go there too. And he gets the save. That's really good stuff. And the game's still 2-1. But Minty gets it on net. Oh, another great save by Jazz. Oh my God, Bar. This is getting crazy. No way. We see another zero second goal to even this up. Believe it. I, I won't be able to handle it. Gladiators are keeping it to one to try and keep that opportunity alive. They're putting on the pressure here, but they know they have to win until the clock hits zero. They can't score just yet. That <laughs> yes. would be far too easy for the Fort Templar side, and they will keep the pressure on until that point. Maybe Skiz will do it earlier. That looks for the double, but slides it to the left off of the backboard. Bossy Lassie in, back into the middle, but no chance for Jazz to come through with the shot. Gladiators keeping their hopes up of trying to equalize in game three, but Fearless Alpha holds strong. Genzo gets it away, flashes one on net. Jazz gets demoed for the save, but Minty will not push for this one. They know they don't have to push here. They just have to survive, and Minty plays so well there to take more time off the clock, but Jazz is going to try and desperately push it for his gears, misses, gives it away to Genzo, <laughs> and it slips all the way through. Gladiators with their last push of the game concede another, and Fearless Alpha will go ahead in the series. They will, and you know what? Not quite a zero-second goal, but this last five seconds of every game, there has been a goal. 
So, that being said, we are still on par for uh, the last five seconds of this game, bringing some sort of excitement. Blue Ticks maybe gonna look for another. No, he will just drop it. Fearless Alpha look to get into game four as quick as possible. They know that they have been better throughout these games. And time Gladiators out. are going to have to struggle. Yes. Indeed, Skiz will call the timeout for Gladiators. Their lives are on the line here. One more loss and their season is done. They have to take this timeout. No, there's no other opportunity to use it. And they yeah, have I to agree. try and use that to their advantage. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good time for a call, a call a timeout. A couple of misplays in their own end. I can only hope that Sky has noticed that there's a timeout. Um, I feel like he has. Um, I'm not positive. Uh, yes, I think we got some confirmation here. Um, however, yep, yeah, and uh, yeah, we do have confirmation. Now, this is a good time for a timeout, Bar. You have to admit, gives us a little breather too, but um, this is the time to call it. You, you can't hope you make it to game five and then use your timeout, take away some of your moment momentum. You, you got to do it now. You've lost two in a row. But what are you saying at timeout here, Bar? What are you saying to the lads? It's, it's always tough. It's a situation like this where you, you scrape by with game one in a five minute, or not a five minute over time, but they, they almost drop it in, in zero seconds and then Fearless Alpha are better for two games. It's, it's always going to be tough to come back, but there's going to be opportunities. They have looked better and at, at times, and although Fearless Alpha should be confident in themselves, Gladiators, they can take this time to reset and often that's more about what the timeout is all. You don't always have to change exactly what you're doing but just settle back into the rhythm that you know that you love that got you to this place in the first place that got you the, the sixth best goal difference here remember gladiators come in with 30 plus 35 alpha only plus 12 so they know how to score goals and they just have to try and get it together on this final day they've got one more chance to try and figure it out yeah this is the opportunity that they've got this is what uh, separates the amateurs from the masters are you able to to get yourself back into matches and unfortunately on the other end of the field what also separates the amateurs from the masters is closing out series so someone's got to give here bar someone's gonna have to fail um at their job here today and that's what makes us as exciting isn't it um we do have to tell them the timeout is over but we do not have all players in the match so uh i'm not sure who, who are we waiting on here we got skiers we don't have the rest of gladiators so Need to get them back in. Hopefully Skiers can tell his teammates because he is still in the lobby. But uh, yeah, Bossy Lassie joins back. It should be okay. Yeah, Skiers says they are coming back. So they try, to, they try to sneak a few more seconds out of this time mode, it seems. There went a lot. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We have the players joining up. And Gladiators play with their lives on the line. Fearless Alpha, as you say, play to close out the series and get themselves into the next match versus Riyadh Legion. They've been better throughout, but can Gladiators fight back? Well, they're definitely going to have to fight back. And uh, it, it's a delicate line here where you don't want to be trying to do too much, you know, dribbling too much. You may, let the ball do some of the work. Uh, make sure you don't make any silly mistakes. And uh, let the gods take over. If you deserve to be in game five, you'll be there. And there Great play. An all time high. And you can see that they're going to go for the highlight plays. They're not happy with just trying to ride it out and work on their basics. They're going to try and look for these flip resets, look for the high quality chances, because they know that's what it's going to take to break down a team like Fearless Alpha. They've been really solid in defense, and they just ha might have to up their offensive strategies here. They are to try and take it to them to win a lot. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I look at that and I almost have to agree. Sometimes I think, you know, stick to the basics are okay, but sometimes a, a team is playing well enough where it, it, it does take something special to beat them. And that's what it kind of feels like for, uh, for, for Alpha right now. They're playing so strong defensively that it's almost... You want to just go for something great here, something unsavable. As they do, oh, he just misses the bump, and that would have been something rather out of the top bins there. That would have been really good. Uh, but uh, they do miss that chance, and how many of these are they going to miss is the question. Is it going to come back to bite them? Yeah, it's so well played from Lutix. They haven't gone for many bumps, Gladiators, no. but even still, Lutix can see what Skiers is trying and immediately snuffs it out, gets Fearless Alpha the ball back in their possession, and they're immediately trying to look for more chances. Minty's center ball doesn't go anywhere, but the more center balls Fearless Alpha get, the more they have scored, and they've proved that throughout. They've had plenty of infield passes, plenty of teammates always waiting in the middle, and it's really been causing problems 
for the Gladiators. Here they come again. Genzo looking for the solo effort this time, but Jazz gets in the way. Minty keeps it alive. It should just be the bottom last. He just gives it away to Lutix, though, but he cannot wow. get any power behind it. Lotix does seem to have a good read at the play at the moment, but Gianzo going oh! ahead for Fearless Alpha once again. He's been all over the show for this Fearless side, and once again, he steps up, bangs it to the top left, and Gladiator's mountain becomes another 100 meters taller. Absolutely, and uh, you're right spot on at right in the top left, and there wasn't much you could do. I don't know if it would have went in if he wasn't there. It looked like it was coming back across the goal line, but... You can't really blame a guy for going to try and save that one. It, it looks to be dead on. Minty immediately tries to find a second. Fearless Alpha are going to be relentless here. They're not going to be happy with one. They're never happy with one. They always want more. They always want to inflict further pain on their opponents, and it might spell disaster for Gladiators. Minty Smith, this one, those gears has space, but Lutix, again, is so quick to shut it down. Even the chance for Bossy Lassie, he can do nothing with it because Genzo is so well placed. They're always in the right place at the right time, Alpha, in offense and defense. And it's probably going to get them to see wow. over the line. Minty steps up to the plate once more. And the fearless Alpha side are half a game away from advancing to the next stage of the plates. So you're right, two and a half minutes left. And they put two shots on goal. They have two that go in. And a great bump through the rotation again. And the demo starting to play a factor in this series. Gladiators, Noi is the moment, and that is okay. absolutely what Jazz thinks as well, because he's got one back off with a kickoff, and that is absolutely huge from the Welshman. Right from the depths of elimination, he said, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going anywhere yet. We have a game to play. We've got two and a half minutes. Let's do this. They get him on the board, and now we're back to anyone's game. Next goal is a big one. They don't get another one off the kickoff, though, and they're going to have to score from open play. It feels like it's been a lifetime since that's happened for them with how solid Fearless Alpha have been, but they know they can do it. They won game one. And there's still going to be chances here for them. Plenty of time left. Not that it's back to one goal. Just three minutes and, you know, if it goes all the way down to the wire, so be it. They know they can have chances in zero seconds. We've seen it so far, but they might give another one away here, Jazz. Scrambles to it, gets it away. And they have a chance on the counter. Jazz is found by Skiz, but Lutix once again is so quick to shut it down. Bossy Lassie this time gets the better of him, almost gets it in the middle for Jazz, gets a demo under Minty, but Jazz has to whip back as last man. He takes it well, though the first touch is good. Skiz and Jazz are both looking to follow this, but Minty is quicker. And that's been the problem a lot of the time. Fearless Alpha just reading these wall bounces, these backward bounces faster than their opponents and repeatedly getting them out of trouble. Yeah, they are completely out of trouble almost every time he touches the ball, it feels like. Uh, Minty's doing so well, even with his ping, um, to get these reads and to be there first. He, he's playing a whole second ahead, um, and it's really amazing. I, I have to just give credit where credit's due. Um, but they are starting to put some more pressure on the counterattack. Do you think the counterattack is going to be a problem for these guys? It's going to have to be. Gladiators yeah, won the hope. So. They just cannot sustain pressure like Fearless Alpha have throughout the series. Here's another chance for them. It's opening up. Obviously, last you cannot read it, though. And you have to imagine that's the sort of play that Fearless Alpha would have scored, that Gladiators just don't seem to be able to. Yeah, it seems like they're taking uh, the same chances, uh, but the uh, ones are going in and the other ones are not. As it could be, oh, he kind of fumbled it with in front of the net, and Minty might have just sealed their fate. 45 seconds left, and Minty punches it home. Jazz and Bossy Lassi scramble, and yet can do nothing. They are powerless to prevent the Northern Irishman from getting his bread. He scored so many goals, all of them on Alpha have. They've been left, right, and center, all of them getting on the board. And they are working as a unit to try and destroy, eliminate, and pulverize this Gladiators team. Genzo looks for the double, it doesn't work out. Lutix gets it back in the middle. Minty, sir, keeps it alive. Genzo to finish it off, it's off the cross, but Minty finishes it off. Oh. And Alpha are absolutely humongous in this series. They have three goals to the good, they've surely done it now. And they're all taking on the same wavelength. Absolutely incredible performance. Yeah, they just kept getting it lower and lower off that backboard. It was, uh, they were just edging themselves in, and they finally did it. And it absolutely 4 1 with 30 seconds left. It's, uh, it's almost time to, to start the church bells here. It's time for everyone to go home. But uh, th this is, well, this was a better series than this last game shows. Yeah, Gladiators, they have crumbled here in the last minute of game number four, and you cannot put them down for that. They gave it their best shot. 
They went into that five minute overtime and just didn't work out for them. They almost had a good chance at eliminating the former champions here in the first round. But in that first game win is such a long time ago. Alpha with three in a row. They were better in all three, but especially this last game really showed how they can work out as a unit. Just attack after attack after attack. Player after player after player ready for anything you throw at them. And when they're on the offense, they're absolutely deadly. Uh, that death is ensuing there for sure. Um, and I would like to take this time to mention uh, our predictions. Yeah, yeah, you you might have a you might, you <laughs> might have a point there. I mean, feels maybe good. You want to talk to them slightly more than me? Yeah, <laughs> feels good. I actually have you to thank. Yeah, really? Yeah, so <laughs> we both win today, Bar. We both win today. We both get to hold hands on the walk home because I'm not paying for a cab because I don't care where you stay. But you can't stay here. Well, you can! Because we have another game coming up, Bar, don't we? We do, absolutely. Fearless Alpha with that win. Do advance to the next round, but their work is far from over. They've got to win a whole other series to get to the playoffs on Saturday. The next round will be Fearless Alpha taking on Rias Legion. Is still, loser goes home. Winner advances a single elimination action here in the plains of RSC. Join us back in about 15 minutes for more Master RSC action.
and we are back. We have another great match underway today uh, with Alpha just winning, edging out uh, a 3-1 victory, and it was good to see them play as well as they did. Uh, we have the Ria, the Rias Legion um, up next against these guys, and it's going to be an amazing match. Joining me in the booth today, we have none other than Ground Zero, who just raided in. Thank you for doing that, buddy. How are you feeling today? I am feeling absolutely fantastic. Having just got off from streaming my own show matches, I'm ready for some more Rocket League because this just never ends. And can I say I'm actually excited for this one, Fearless Alpha versus Rias Legion. Who do you think have you got winning today, my boy? Well, you know, I do have to take Alpha today. Um, from what I've known, you, you're taking Alpha as well, yeah? Yep, exactly. Absolutely. We do have the play-in bracket up here, and we do see a long road ahead for these squads um you gotta win you gotta win and you're in and uh, that's what we are looking for today some more victories and alpha's probably thinking the same thing much of the same that they just did and they've taken a long road um and hopefully they can uh get into this bracket that is so elusive as we look at so uh, we look at towards some of the team stats here um fairly even um, as we look at the goals for and goals against that's a, a main difference maker for me here um Alpha so strong uh, with some of the saves they make. Uh, do you think that's going to make a difference, or do you think demos are going to be the big difference maker here with uh, Rias being above them on that? Last time I talked about demos being a main factor, I got neither of that and uh, the other team instead using it out. So I'm not going to go for demos today. I'm going to go ahead with some, uh, you know, put some focus on the good old fundamentals and talk about the defense today. And right now, the defense and the shots right now are all in favor for Rias Legion. But we've seen the f uh, Fearless Alpha taking more wins overall against any team they've played in comparison to Rias Legion. So uh, sometimes the stats can back me. Sometimes it, what we won't see until we join the lobby today between both and watch this game pan out between both of these teams. That is definitely Rocket League in a nutshell, isn't it? You never know what you're going to get on any given day, which is always uh, an exciting part of it. And uh, we do look uh, to some of the players' stats. And I always have to mention Charm because he has 72 games played. He is the Iron Man of this team. He's got 74 goals, which I believe puts him in second place for goals this season after last game. Fearless Alpha taking over that. Um, uh, no, sorry. They beat out a team that had someone in first place. So doing Charm a favor there. Um, but uh, we do look at Minty, who might be playing again here. I'm not sure. Um, he played really well as the sub for these guys last game. Do you think that's going to be a difference maker as well? We might see Minty pan out, you know, if he's the stronger player, which he, uh, while, you know, not a lot of games played under his match, sometimes, the, you know, the, those are the underdogs that just pile up mm -hmm. and actually, you know, mm -hmm. take take the spotlight in these kind of games. It might be someone to watch out for, but Genzo is also another person who is, uh, while not enough game is played as Rias, uh, Rias' uh, player uh, Charm there, he is just as equal in my opinion. So Genzo and Minty for Fearless Alpha, uh, you know, two players to watch out for those, and Charm along with uh, Misudo. Both these players, in my opinion, that you know, they have they have my eye. I've I've got my eye, you know glasses cleaned up today, just gazing at these players tonight. Yep, and it uh, looks like we're probably going to be starting fairly soon here. But uh, I do see the name Ember being thrown around in the chat a lot, and uh, I don't know if it's an omen, but whenever time I see someone cheering for someone, they've got support in chat. It can really bring a good energy to your game. That's why I make my mom watch all my streams. So that is, <laughs> that's how I got to GC, okay? Uh, carried by my mom watching. So um, with Ember being here as well um, and saying that they have no warm up, uh, <laughs> I have to say, oh, I do not care. You had time to warm up and uh, Alpha could say the same. We got too used to playing uh, the same team over and over again last game. Any excuse can be made at this point, but you know what uh, the people only care about? Do you get that win or not? Who shows exactly. up? What is the result we will see uh, as we, you know, hop into the game? And uh, it's all the results. Results is all that matters. And I don't care if it's a W or an L. We're going to see how this game... Because I'm here for the Rocket League and I will stay for the Rocket League. But do you think you're gonna, we're going to be pushing it to a Game 5 in your opinion? You know what? Um... Not that my opinion makes us go to game five, but I, there's something in the cards here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. That you can feel. There's a weird energy. Yeah, there's a weird energy. Um, I think we can give them the whole join up cue. They, they, uh, people are coming in here. 
Um, I do see there the matches have been joined. Let's take a look. I see that we have one team in. We do have a uh, 145,000 people in attendance today in the arena, which is a sellout crowd uh, for this park, and it's uh, a good good reason too. These tickets were buy one get four free. So I mean, obviously we're gonna have uh, free tickets going out, but uh, do you think a full house tonight makes a difference as well? Sometimes it might do something for the mental. It can either make or break you. And sometimes that pressure can even, uh, can sometimes, you know, push you to greater heights or it can just make you crumble like a mountain under an earthquake. And uh, we'll see which, which game, which team uh, has the better mental today. Because that's a factor we haven't really talked about at all. And that deserves a little bit more focus as well. Because sometimes that mental is something that we've seen from a couple of games we've actually casted together as well uh sir win a lot yes that uh, while they may have been the better team sometimes when their mental isn't just that good or that strong or uh like a mountain that it needs to be it can just like a mountain as i said earlier another earthquake can crumble just as much and we're gonna hop into the game immediately watch out these players and we'll see how well this game pans out itself genzo now pushing the ball into the corner leaving it to his teammate ludix who now pushes it into the blue side and charm now the man we were talking about earlier pushing it off the ball from the to an aerial off the backboard and Genzo pushing it up, passing to his teammate Minty. Minty off a ceiling pinch, possible goal here, and no person in red to be found right now. Now Ludix he has the ball in his hand. Will he do something with it? No, he won't. Push for him. Just get absolutely, you know, just like a, a dog pile by two players from uh, yes. Rias DJ and I. Now this might be an opportunity for Genzo to pass it to Minty. Oh! Minty, what a save from the pseudo! And uh, now Charm with the ball in his possession leaves it to the pseudo to clear it out. No boost in his tank right now. We'll just, you know, just just not the strongest one of a clear. And now the ball is just having a tussle in the corner. Two players from both Fearless Alpha and Fearless Legion just piling the uh, dog piling themselves and just you know trying to see a scope. And it's only been the first minute itself, and we're seeing some good aggression from both sides and even better defense as well. Yeah, the defense, like you said earlier, might be a, a thing to recognize here because um, with both teams surely warmed up now, you're in the game, no 10 second goal off the start. Now it's an open play, and that is where players can really shine. A huge demo as Ember takes a good touch off the net, up the side wall. This is going to be going Ooh. off the side wall. Great save by Minty, the counter's on. Guys, going to get this? He gets the reset. No, he doesn't, but he gets the deflection back into the middle, and no one's going to be there. Minty does get there first, though. It's back in the middle, and Mistu gets a good save. Wow, what a great pass to play there. Really heated up things. And Charm is going to get the ball out to his teammate, Ember, who's going to not take over. He actually gets the flick back against the end. Oh, it's on the ground. It's going to us. No. can't go anywhere. No. That oh my god! That is unfortunate for Team Fearless Alpha. The, the team we've given so much credit for, unfortunately for them, just suffered their first goal. And Genzo, not the strongest of the chest, he felt the pressure on the goal line. And unfortunately for him, just got that last couple of touches on the ball to push that ball into his own net. And the first goal goes to Rias Legion in this game. Still three minutes left on the timer. We might see a quick response back because Fearless Alpha aren't going to let that goal. Uh, you know, just uh, crumble them just yet. They still got time. They still got opportunities that they can make. And oh, that was a, a good three-man passing play from Team uh, Rias there. Because that was absolutely beautiful. But saved well, nonetheless, still by Fearless Alpha. And right now, Genzo just pushing the ball all the way. Good offensiveness. And Ember there. What a touch from this man. And oh. he is feeling the plays. He was getting complimented so much in the Twitch chat there earlier. And what a redirect that wall was setting this man up. This man is his own team. He needs no one else right now. As he finds out the pass from his teammate there. Good 50 from uh, Rias Legion. This might be an open goal. Oh. Misudo just tried to rotate back. Unfortunately for him, he just wasn't there fast enough. Couldn't get the barest touches necessary for that save there. And they suffer a goal one to one. Game is tied up and it is still half the game left. What half of the game? We will see in the next two minutes, 37 seconds left there. Wow, literally great redirect. And like, oh, this is going to be an opportunity. Oh. It's in. A kickoff goal, and just like we saw in the last series, to catch you, to catch you up quick times here, Ground Zero. Fearless go down, and then they come back really quick. <laughs> so you have to uh, be careful when you score on them, because they do tend to just uh, get back in this game right away. And that's what they've done here, two to one, just like that. My god, these guys respond back faster than any girl I've DM'd in my life. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, faster than five minutes because they have a little bit of game left to play and uh, they're not being left on red yet. So we're going to see what Genzo can do here as he's got a good opportunity. Mitsu, Mitsu, two is up early with a great save, but it's back Ooh. on net. Oh, oh another oh, save by Charm. 
Oh, what a save it is, and Ember's gonna clear his lines. And they are in a game, folks. They are in one now. They are starting to press, and the first game is so important. At the same time, it isn't. You have tons of time in the rest of the series, but you do want to get on the board early. And uh, the pseudo right now. Going for his aerial play. They're trying to find a bump. They're trying to find a, a something. He just couldn't find something at all. Just struggled a little bit there, but he did uh, break into that uh, defense. You know, just crumbled the, the defense from Fearless Alpha. And right now, they can't really make an opportunity for a play there. And Charm with another save. 50 off with Genzo. Dogpile in the corner that we see in the bottom right. And right now, Charm with the pass off from Ember pushes it into the red corner. And Minty clears it out once again. We'll see how Ember responds back. Another. This is just like, now, now we start from football to a tennis match. Have we changed the genre of sport? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully, it shifts back to football because that's what you'd like to see. It is. And uh, it, it may be nerves starting to, to take a bit of a play here. Maybe teams starting to realize, uh, yeah, this is a do or die. We need this. And uh, it starts to maybe, but a little bit of a special run. That's a save oh. off the goal line by Minty. And again, he's in the right place at the right time. You can't teach that, folks. You gotta have a good feeling. A great bump, and Misutu is gonna get there first. He does get in the middle, but it's gonna be too late for Loot Ducks because he's there first. But it's a great 50, and they have a chance here. Demo on the goal line. No, Genzo gets over. It's a great save. Important save there, Ground Zero. A huge one with 50 seconds left. Uh, and 50's last minute. This is, this is where it's make or break. Which team? will be clutched or kicked in uh, this first game. And right now, good pass, off, good pass off from Ember, clears it out. But Genzo, even a better push there. He clears it out. And Masuda struggling with that aerial, couldn't get a touch. And leaves his team. Team and Ember and pushing for a charm there. He gets 50 out of his mind by Minty there. What a shot from this man. As he, Ludix, an even better play from the man as well. Get, get that, got that 50. Apologies to Minty instead because of the replay there. But Ludix, the man who deserves a proper credit here, getting that goal, raising that lead by another goal. Two to three to one. And it's still 30 seconds left on the timer. And these lads here right now from Team Fearless Alpha truly showing some great game. And right now, Charm is trying to push back once again. We're still in the uh, uh, Alpha side there. Uh, for them, they just can't make an opportunity. They're gonna suffer another goal there. What a clear that can you know just uh, transition to do a goal for Genzo and four to one. It seems to me that Ember's claim of them not being warmed up is <laughs> definitively true right now for these boys. Yeah, clearly the mistake they made was scoring first because four unanswered goals with 12 seconds left leave them in a deficit of this game and maybe trying to get one for momentum for the next game here. Uh, but they are gonna have to maybe change a bit of their. Uh, their play style for going into this next game. Maybe a bit more pressure in their uh, in their end because they are clearing their end with possession right now, which is absolutely an issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, those clears can sometimes, you know, when, when done uh, when done opportunity really Correct. correctly, is uh, it, it's, it goes into your favor. But wait, so Masudo seems to be experiencing some issues as he does seem to be restarting his PC. But we'll utilize this opportunity to talk between each other, you and me, sir, when a lot. And uh, a lot of talking we have to do, especially on Rias's side here, because uh, it seems to be the biggest issue I've realized that, or I've just observed. Uh, they seem to be struggling with their boost management because the second they come close to the ball, either they have 15 or zero. And we've seen that on a lot of the players. And. Uh, you know, def definitively, I, I do agree. Their lack of warm-up, as they say, does seem to be working against their favor here. It does, and uh, you know what? Uh, after one game, though, like we said, the first game's allowed to go. If we see more of the same here, I don't think we can say that the warm-up was an issue, so only time will tell. Um, the ping seems to be good here for everyone. I was keeping a close eye on it. Um, there were a couple of blimps in the, in the ping, but not enough to make it a 4-1 match, the the Fearless Alpha squad was very fast that game. Um, they gave no situational awareness to Rias Legion. They were on top of them in their end all game. And like you said, after a couple of rotations, it was even when Rias Legion got the ball, finally, they had no boost. So mm -hmm. that's going to be an absolute issue for them going forward. And, and as we move toward the next map here, this is my favorite map in the game. It just gives you a great feeling. Um... I don't know. It's just a beautiful map, and I have to thank the creator, whoever made this one. Mm -hmm. Massive credits to the map creator here as we just get some chill vibes, but it won't be a chill game as uh, the games are heating up in this best of five, and we're already in the second game. Warm-up game for uh, Team uh, Rias there. Yes. One goal, a uh, one, one, one game up for Team Fearless, and they're going to try and get that one goal as well in the second match. You know, Spice started off this game uh, with uh, some good vibes for themselves, and 
A good clear from Minty pulls it off to the backboard. Might be an opportunity there, and the person on the ba on the backboard there just missing the touch on the ball. And uh, the aggression from Team Alpha is absolutely paramount as they get that result. The results bloom for themselves, and what a play! I thought for a second that they created an opportunity for Rias, you know, to possibly turn it off get a goal there but fortune for them Ludix this match just popped out of absolutely nowhere their fast aerial got that necessary touch and just doings that ball right into Riaz's net there as he suffered the first goal one nil down yep and it was a themselves. speed it was a speed issue again there they were just a bit slow getting in the air and they had three people in the attacking third oh what a save what amazing double as just as you thought it would be in amazing save I, is that a change of momentum for them finally looking for some sort of love some sort of life in the game But they're not out of the woods yet as ember gets a good touch back against there's could be anyone here Mitsu does get up and he does get the delayed out But it's back into their end again as Lutex beats them charm has got to get a good clear here It's around the wall where Genzo's gonna be Genzo gets it back into the middle. Is anyone there? Minty's gonna get there first again What? what? Okay, that was that was the oddest 50 I've ever seen in my life there. It was very odd. A little triple touch 50 there. I've seen it before, but it does hurt them. And he, oh, it takes an awkward touch in front of the net. That's too bad. A good opportunity. As they are starting to mount some pressure here, ground, it could be that they find an equalizer soon. Mm -hmm. And they're biting back. They're nibbling at the defense yes. of uh, Fearless Alpha. And this, you know, it seems to be getting those results. What a redirect from wow. uh, Masudo. Unfortunately for him, just a tad bit uh, of an awkward touch. Just couldn't, you know, get the necessary power there. Uh, unless, you know, hack the game and, you know, force it to glitch. But uh, we, thankfully, we don't see any hacks right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, for now. But for now. Uh, who knows? One of these one of these people might secretly be, uh, you know, a software engineer who might change the pace of the game, add some goals in while we're not looking, you know. And uh, give themselves a false credit, but right now, good play there from Genzo. He's got a shot, and Masudo last one on deep and struggle just to get that last bit of touches. So, unfortunately for him, he seems to be just awkwardly positioned. And Ember with a pre jump there, something that they need to change while the while the offensiveness is picking up, and that's what you like to see, especially in this game, as they suffered some goals there. Uh, they have uh, you know gone a tad bit lackluster in the defense. Uh, pushing for them. Three to, still three minutes left on the timer. Two goals. Enough time to bring it back. And Ember is uh, the first man who's trying to find those opportunities for Team uh, Rias Legion right now. Yep, and it's going to come down to some aerial battles here, what they just keep losing. As soon as they start winning some aerial battles, you know, this game could turn around and maybe putting some more pressure. Being behind 2 nothing makes you play a little bit differently as they can't really just sit back too much. Now they have to go for something or this game will get out of hand quickly as Masuto gets a good interception in the middle. Ember's going to put this on net. No bump. Oh, what a great play by Lutix. A great play. And another great play by Genzo. They are just feeding that middle, but it doesn't matter because Fearless Alpha is there every time. They have great rotations right now and great boost control. These uh, Team Fearless Alpha are just working like an absolute well-oiled unit. That's the kind of chemistry you like to see, of course, you know, all the time. You know, you want to see those kind of players that it's obvious that these, guys have, these, that these players have been playing with each other for so long that they just vibe around with each other. They seem to be just, you know, taking their time and just passing the ball all around. Find those opportunities and mid team try to go for a shot there early enough, but saved well by Rias Legion once again. Still two minutes left on the timer. And right now, Masudo trying to clear out uh, Team Fearless Alpha's players give his teammates an opportunity to get a shot there and Masudo now zero boost once again off the ceiling and Charm stops the ball from hopping into his half here. Ember with the follow up from his player and oh, oh my god what a double tap from Ember there oh. pass off from Charm first touch was absolutely immaculate demo from Masudo and that's what you like to see as I was saying this man is trying to find those demo opportunities you know make those opportunities for his teammate and what a demo that was two off the rotation from Team Fearless Alpha, and they got that goal from themselves. That there is their, you know, their offensiveness has finally bloomed. Oh out. no! I spoke too soon. You did curse of the commentator for you, and like we've seen so many times before, the only mistake you can make against Fearless Alpha is scoring a goal, because they come back so strong immediately. Like these guys, you know, you, you see these people, Team Rias Legion, they're, they're, you know, they're waving their trophies, they're saying, "Let's go, boys! We've done something. We brought it back." and I was gonna say I spoke too soon again, didn't I? But again, for us, yeah. uh, I didn't have to say that. But what a clear that was from Charm there, pushing the ball all the way out. But as I was saying earlier, what a what what a moment from that. I, I spoke too soon, and so I think I need to start keeping my mouth shut. But good play there from Genzo, as uh, he just pops the ball off. Minty now clearing it down the middle to Ludix and push for him. Ludix, not the most solid of touches that you want to see on the ball. There, good shot from Genzo. Oh, and, another one. Oh, 
This man, this man, what has he been eating today? Because I need it. Uh, Ember there, unfortunately for him. Another clear shot. That's something that they need to fix off. Because Genzo and the uh, team Fearless Alpha overall are utilizing any mistouches from Team uh, Rias right now for another goal uh, for themselves. They're just, uh, you know, redirecting these these people, you know, from Fearless Alpha have just been attending the tra uh, trigonology classes because they're finding those angles. And Minty now off the aerial flip reset gets oh bumped by God. Charm, and that's playoff from Ludix and Genzo. There just uh, leaves the ball alone. Masudo open open goal opportunity. Not enough boost in his arsenal to redirect that goal. And unfortunately for him, he's gonna have to force that wall, force to watch that ball once again. Goes into the possession of team Fearless Alpha, and once again, leaves him the opportunity. Charm now with the ball. What will he do with it? Can't do much. Leaves it to Ember now. Ember gonna take it slow there. Going for the aerial play, gets beat up once again by Genzo. Now Masuda gonna change up the pace there. Goes up for a fast aerial this time. And uh, leaves it to his teammate Charm after that redirect off the ceiling. Flip reset. No, he goes for the double tap aerial. And if he got that in, my god, I would have absolutely been screaming at the top of my head right now. Because that, that would have been. Tap. That would have been really tight. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of places to go, but not not in the net very very easily there. Um, and and you have to admit, uh, Alpha's playing really well. They're they're holding their back end here, and this four one finish is going to be well deserved. Um, what has to change here going into the next game? I think if they carry on the aggression that we've seen and change up the pace, oh, there's there. one. <laughs> Charm zero second goal. Unfortunately for him, it won't be in any clutch uh, zero second montages for himself. Ember uh, just back up there left to the Charm two to four. But the results there are still very uh, reminiscent of the first game we've seen. And you ask me what they should be changing? Keep up the aggression, but uh, start focusing on rotation. You know, bring back the fundamentals, which are so important to the overall gameplay itself because we've seen that in alpha for alpha they're they're just leaving the ball the second any team any of their teammates just misses the opportunity there's another person that follows up perfectly i don't see that happening for rias right now maybe that might be due to the lack of chemistry maybe they haven't played as much as alpha has but uh, it's just everything just seems to be going in alpha's favor right now yeah and you know even with the sub minty and who's only this is his fifth game sixth game um you Every excuse could really be out the window right now. It's going to come down to, hey, how fast can you guys play without making mistakes? Because we're playing pretty fast right now. Can you match us? Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like they're going to be able to be matched. But the reverse sweep is on the cards. We do see in chat 100 gifted for the perfect reverse sweep. Um, I will gift the sub if there's a reverse sweep today. Um, my wife would kill me if I gifted 100. So we're going to gift one. <laughs> And no one tell her I gifted anything, okay? They're great. Um, so with that being said, we do move forward to the next game. We're going to be on Sovereign Heights, which is one of my favorite fields um, in the whole game. Top three for me. Uh, and not as many in attendance of this one. A cool 25,000 if you include the apartment buildings around the side and the people traveling across the bridge. We really look for numbers <laughs> on this one. But... We do have a match underway here, Ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, the attendance there might be, uh, who knows which team they're rooting for, but we're rooting for uh, Fearless Alpha right now as they take the second game. Right now, they're on match point, and they're looking like a far stronger team. And Ember with a quick, uh, a very quick change of decals. They went from the uh, neural, neural network, and nearly the car change might be going in his favor there as he just missed an opportunity. Good defense by Fearless Alpha, and they're still doing everything there's just such a well-balanced team they've got that aggression they've got that defense and they've got the rotation that is uh, can i just say a well-balanced meal and i am eating happily watching these players for uh fearless alpha play the game right now still first 30 seconds no goal yet no results obtained but ludix was edging it out just a bit good save from rias and genzo trying to push that ball in the middle give it to his teammate minty probably a miscom there as minty was nowhere to be found what a pinch off the corner oh. Ember and Masudo at a bit of a double commit there. That's not what you want to see. This might be opening a hole for Fearless Alpha to utilize for themselves. Minty just misses the ball there. Ember with a save, and this might be a clear <laughs> for his goal for Rias Legion. And what a shot that is. Ember the man this time for Rias Legion as they finally paid off. And what a save from Masudo. Pinched it off the backboard there, their own backboard. And uh, Ember just enough boost to push it past them. When I was talking about the hole in opportunities from their double commit from both Ember and Masudo earlier, uh, I think I spoke too far too soon as uh, Team Fearless Alpha. They're the ones to actually give up the opportunity this time. And uh, first yeah, goal for yeah, themselves. Yeah. A good pace of change from uh, both of these teams right now. Who, you know, what, what do you think? How, how do you think it's going to pan out? Well, uh, uh, that's on you. That one's on you for sure. Uh, I, I got to say, curse of the commentator here. 
But as we've mentioned before, I, I was about to say, well, I think the same mistake happened. They scored first. And it just awakens Fearless Alpha uh, into scoring a relentless amount of goals here. So let's see if they can keep off the scoreboard here, Ground. It, it seems to me every time they get one, the whole game changes. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, if someone has time to edit some Caster Chris moments from me, I would really <laughs> appreciate that. At me on Twitter, because yeah. I'd like to see it. And while I'm talking about Mint, let's, you know, let's, let's, let's let Minty cook there as well. Because he's trying to get that pinch off the ground for a goal, you know bring out the lead for Fearless Alpha. Good plays there, pre-flips it out and leaves the ball alone from Ember who couldn't get a touch there. Off that misplay and charm, what a goal! Damn. What a shot from this man. That was absolutely beautiful. And we're seeing some responses back. This is the first time we've seen uh, Team uh, Rias Alpha, uh, Rias Legion, to respond back just as fast this time in comparison uh, from the last couple of games. We're after the first response from Fearless Alpha. They just let, they just, they just crumble, they just let Fearless Alpha run a, run a train over them, you know? But uh, we're seeing the aggression pile on in this game because they realize that this is do or die. Another shot in from Charm. And a good save there from Ludix. Puts it off the corner. Pass off from Minty to Ludix once again. And he gets stopped by uh, Musuto. He's trying to find his teammate Ember. And Ember with a shot. Will he get a goal though? Oh. Good save from Minty once again. And Ember trying to push that ball right back in the middle. Ludix there now with the ball. Pushes off the ceiling. Good clear there. Minty with a redirect. Oh, oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. What did oh we just witness? Look at this, off the ceiling, Minty gets off to the side of his car here and just bangs it bar down. That was the only place he could get it. Touches the crossbar, a kiss of the crossbar into the net. It's 2-2 and the reverse sweep is back off now. Oh my goodness, it could go any way right now. It, you, If you're a betting man, I would not want to be betting in this one. We have no idea how this is going to end up. And uh, I think it's going to be too soon because right now Ludix to pinch off the ceiling to Minty. Minty with the... A strong touch there, but get, just get stopped by Masudo. Shot off from oh. Ember, and it's just gonna hit the crossbar. Charm back there. Down. Perfectly follows up off the backboard there from his teammate Ember's shot, and that works perfectly in Team Vias's favor there. And Ludix just struggling a little bit, try to get that little uh, pre-flip, you know, you know, get that flip off the ceiling, you know, the ceiling of the goal there, and get back down fast enough for the defense. Watch with him. Sometimes the flip just never works in your favor. And he's forced to watch that ball goes into his net and it's 3 to 2. Good demo plays, opens up the opportunity for Alpha to get a shot off the backward. Charm misses the shot, uh, save there, Minty. So the pass down on his right wall and Ludix. And it seems to me that all of everybody's just missing the ball at this point. What is happening? Yeah, that was a couple of whiffs in a row. And at this pace of play, it does tend to happen if you're trying to read what's going to happen and someone misses it, throws off your whole equilibrium. Another big demo in the corner does this create space for genzo he gets it down but ember there instead minty's gonna have to do something here he does get off the wall he does get another Ooh. touch that's a great play by minty as the ball gets to the right wing we are looking at some pace play picking up as we get to the last two minutes of play a huge demo no ember does dodge it and he gets out and then dodges that one and gets the 50 and then gets Ooh. the next touch no he missed was a great play by ember there to clear their lines and they are going to be back into their corner as they do steal boost a what great play by Masuto. That's an amazing touch back into the corner to stall for some time. Genzo's up, though. This is not who you want to have coming at you. He's been playing so well. It's in the middle. Charm gets all. Oh, what a great play by Charm to get off the wall quickly there. And they do clear their lines again. And this game is looking to go the way of Rias. I just mentioned that again. It's going to have to be a save, Charm. Wow, great save by Charm. And they do get both, and they clear their lines again. Ground, this is looking to be a great, great last minute of play. And a great minute is Shelby because I am absolutely hyped for this last minute. And uh, we're just seeing, you know, the, the dogpiling happening in every other corner. They're trying to, you know, get the edge out. And Charm there, forced to watch that blue trail, goes into his own side there. A demo from Ludix on Masudo. Might have opened up something, but unfortunately, cleared off right back to the other side. And Ember, soft touch to his team in Masudo. Back again for another opportunity, and Ludix with another save as well. As uh, Minty now clears it down the middle, Ember with a shot, and what a what a save there from Genzo, just getting a touch there, the necessary touch that you want to see, and that ball not in their net, red net once again, Ember, what a, what a touch from this man, he's going to force for a 50, Masuro trying to stop that ball from going into their half there, and Genzo with another touch of the ball, trying to find his teammate, or oh, will go for the pinch there, and he does get the redirect, touch off of Masuro, cleared off, Minty no, Minty no touch on the ball there, Cham no boost, Force, force pass it to Masudo. That's a good 50 in the air by Ludix and Minty now with a touch. Will he get the necessary power? No, he can. Not adequate enough. As uh, now Ludix going to clear off into the blue side once again. 10 seconds of the time where we might see the first game going in Team Rias' favor here. So five seconds left. Hot push off from 
Genzo to Ludix and unfortunately them the ball now. <laughs> oh no. Charm was not. trying to go for that last clip shot. He was trying to look for the clip. Uh, yes. it, and the and the ball just said no. Not for you. Not today, my friend. No, and, but they uh, do get yeah. out of this game. Yeah, they do get out of this <laughs> game, which I'm sure he's most excited about because we now have the reverse sweep in motion. And we this might be the this might be the hope, the light at the end of the tunnel that uh, TM, Ria, Team Rias has been looking for right now. Um, right now, three to two, but the game was far too close. Make one mistake and you will suffer, and that is uh, that might be something that might be you know on the back, uh, just on the back of the mind for Team Rias here currently. Uh, but Fearless Alpha still looking like the stronger team in my opinion. I don't know about you, uh, my my friends are went a lot. Well, you know what? They are looking pretty strong, and there was just a couple of mistakes they made that game. They're allowed to make mistakes, too. I know we hold them to a high standard now, um, but I have to say, whoever wins this next game is going to win the series. If it goes to a game five, I think Rias Legion's got too much momentum, and they take it. Um, and obviously, if Alpha wins this next game, the series is over. So I think this is, this is just as an important game as game five here. I cannot yep. wait. And uh, I can't wait either. I am literally on the edge of my seat because this is just an absolute great game. We're seeing, I'm not, I'm not saying, saying it's always just in Fearless Alpha's favor here. We're still seeing a balanced game, an amazing uh, couple of games. And oh my days, what a shot off from Ludix. And even a better save from Charm as well. The man remaining the hero currently and Charm now will clear off. And Ludix trying to find his teammate. And that's perfect clear from Ember. Save from wow. Minty off into the corner. Ember pushed up a little bit too far there. Might be worked out well, but Charm with the pass to his team. Man, will he get that shot there? And oh! what a goal! Oh my god, that was an absolute beautiful play there. I thought Masudo, Masudo faking that he's gonna go for the play there. It really worked well against Fearless Alpha, and they're forced to watch that ball goes into the net. Uh, it's only been the first uh, 30 seconds of this game, and what a response back from uh, Team Rias. And we've got a game on our hands, a, ga a good game four. Now, Ludix with the ball. Pass off the ceiling and Masudo. He suddenly turned into a freestyler onto his own net as he tried to go for those sidewall redirects. And uh, those, uh, those, those freestyle plays, unfortunately for him, won't go in his favor as that ball goes into their net. Genzo getting that goal there. Good aerial direction. He just you know, swings up that pressure, gets the necessary power in there, and that goes into the goal. One to one. Game tied up once again. Yeah, great play by Genzo there. He does seem to just gobble up goals around the net. He's got a great nose for net. Um, as he puts another one on here, Charm with a great save. Expected one, but still a great one. Great second redirect after they get the demo. They should be able to clear their lines here. Genzo's going to be up again. No one other than him. Charm gets it off the back wall. This should be in. Oh, Misuto just makes a mistake, but it actually goes to Ember. Who bears? No, he doesn't bear. It's off the crossbar. There's Mayhem on the goal line now. Charm gets it in. He keeps it in. He's going to get the redirect. No, he doesn't. It's back off the side wall. And now they counterattack with full possession and full boost. No, Misuto guesses up and he guesses well. Ember gets the ball over to the right side here. Back in again. There is some mounting pressure, and this game is going to be a good one. Dar uh, I don't see how it could be any darker than this on the field. Both teams using full lights to get what they need, and they're going to have Genzo on the outside. He gets one fake in, but Ember does not fall for it. Great play. Great play indeed. Charm takes control. Ground, I have to say, this is exactly what we signed up for today. Exactly, and I am eating happy right now. I was talking about that full, well-balanced meal from Fearless yes. Alpha, but we're, I, I'm seeing I'm seeing a three-course meal coming on from uh, Team Rias right now. Good save from Masudo. It's not just about Minty now. Pushing the ball right back in, and they're trying to nibble at that defense of uh, Rias's and, and Ember. What a controlled uh, air. That, that was ever so graceful. Open opportunity oh. from Team Rias, and uh, that is not something that Fearless Alpha wants to be giving away for free. Right now, Team Fearless Alpha are crumbling at the seams, and uh, Ludix last man back to get that last touch on the ball. Good shot from Charm there. Let's get that lead for the team. Rias, two to one. Three minutes, six seconds left on that timer. And uh, what other game it will be right now? The Team Fearless Alpha still aren't giving up, but that's the kind of mentality you like to, you know, you, you like to watch. Yeah, it is. It, 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 uh, close games are definitely more entertaining as this one's going to... Wow! Misuto comes out of nowhere and makes that save. Great rotation from him. Uh, and Minty keeps it in. I uh, almost was speaking too soon again there. We have to be careful what we say up here in the booth because it could be another one. He does get the... Oh, he does get the back one, but it's back in. Oh, what a great stalemate. They meet at the summit. And he gets the pass over. This is going to be in. 
Let's go! Oh my god. god. Oh what a my play. god. Genzo, he made the sacrificial play. God damn order. Passes off to Ludix and what power this man swung himself back to get that last necessary touch and he shoots that beautifully on the ground. That blue trail going right sorry, the orange red trail going right into the blue net. Two to two game is tied up once again and what a game for. We're continuing to watch. Still half a game left and it's four goals between both teams right now. And four beautiful goals can I say between both teams as well. And Ludix now with a good pitch off on Charm. Ball still in their half and Masuda trying to pass out to his team and Ember. Ember with a Odd touch there, bounces off a little uh, curve of the wall, and Masuda now with an opportunity for a shot, pass off to his team at Charm, and wow. Minty with a beautiful save, this man remains uh, just absolutely peaked between both offense and defense, and Ludix now forced to suffer another demo, and Masuda just taking his time there, just uh, does keep the ball on top of his hood, which for the boost gets to Ember with a opportunity, trying to go for a pinch play there, just trying to, he's adding in for the clip play, this man, he says, if he, if, even if I win or don't win, I'm going for those uh, quick plays that he wants to be on that final montage tonight. Yeah, and he might just get there. Who knows? Um, hopefully it doesn't cause his team any distress on the defensive end. So far, it hasn't been too bad. But these guys are starting to get boost control, and they're starting to come fast and hard at the uh, offensive end, and that's really going to be a problem for Alpha because they seem to be Ooh. playing a bit slower. This has got to be in. Oh. It is. Yeah. The counterattacks have been Alpha. so strong, right? Uh, right over the uh, right over the midline here. Anything over the midline like that, uh, these Rias guys have been getting to the ball first and cleanly. Now, what a play. You could see that. You could just see the goal just happening just you know i i don't know if i have precognition abilities or something or maybe it's just yeah. too obvious because uh, what a play there from team diaz and uh, minty there trying to get that double tap and pass it up to genzo gets with another play oh <laughs> my goodness we're speaking too soon we're speaking too soon we're always underestimating team uh, fearless alpha right now because what a shot from genzo this man just always ready for a follow-up from his team and that's something that i don't think uh, team rias has been able to you know get a response back for just yet Nope, I don't think they have an answer for Genzo yet. He's been automatic in front of in front of the goal. And we have a 3-3 match with a minute left. Uh, and this is game number four. If uh, the guys in pink here, uh, Alpha, can get this win, they seal the series. And I can't say it's not looking good for them. They're starting to bring on a lot of pressure. They're starting to steal boost. And it just swings in the seconds of a game as Minty takes a touch here into the middle. He's going to get it on net. Ooh. It's got to be safe. It is safe. Really good save, too. And they do steal both boosts. And they're going to be able to keep the ball in. Genzo does get over. He's looking for a bump. He doesn't get it. He's going through. He's got speed back to his end. Lux does well to stall that play. And it's going to be Genzo again with Minty following up. He gets off the backboard. Is there anyone there? No. Ooh. Minty goes to get the boost. There is! It's not a great clear! Lux is going to be down! Also, hey, my brother! It's going to be Genzo who has underdone it! And now they have the counterattack! Ember could get the ball on net here! He does! It's off the crossbar! Oh, no. no. oh my days! What a goal! 20 oh, seconds I left! My god, what a shot! Ember with a clean air jump on him. I think he got bumped too far up, couldn't get that double tap. And uh, nonetheless, Masudo there, he is the cleanup crew, ready to just finish off the last goal. And he got the leftovers nonetheless off that play from Ember. 4 to 3, taking the lead once again. Still 20 seconds left on the timer. Will that be enough? We have seen uh, Fearless Alpha bring back uh, responses faster than that. But maybe they finally crumbled here. Maybe maybe there's something just going wrong, not going in their favor. Or Team Rias are just so, showing uh, their just, just their abilities, overall capabilities as a team. Uh, we have underestimated them a tad bit too much, it seems, as the game goes to Rias' favor. And now... It's a tied up game. We're going to game five here. <laughs> We're going to game five. And I can't believe it. We go to Champions Field is what I believe they go to here for game five. And a little quick note on the ads, guys. Uh, it's no one's fault. Twitch makes you do ads every now and then. Uh, you got to subscribe if you want to join them, uh, if you want to exactly. avoid them, I should say. Um, we are going to game five. And like I said, I, I know my prediction is alpha, but your prediction is alpha in five. So you're looking strong here. I'm looking proper strong. If if uh, Fearless Alpha take this game, then can I just say, uh, what are we betting here? What, what we got as the, who, what would the winner take for today's bet, my friend? Uh, we're going to have to do a game. We're gonna have to do a gifted sub to each other's channel, aren't we? That isn't that is entirely fair. I will pop out the money. I'll, I'll cork out my PayPal wallet 
but we will see which team will win it up. But we both got, you know, even if I win, I don't care about the money. It's about the pride. Yes, for, it's for about the pride. It's, exactly. It's about the pride. And it's for the pride for both teams as well. Both Fox and Fearless Alpha meeting each other on Game 5 in uh, Champions Field. And uh, one team will be the champion. One team will be the loser. We're going to see which team it is out for today. Fearless Alpha and Riaz. Riaz coming back just as strong. And what a, what a game it's been. These lads have been popping off. Trying to find those quick plays at the same time. Getting those goals as well. And the first kickoff starts at that time where ticks down and both Genzo and Charm face each other off in the first kickoff. And first game, first kickoff going in favor for Team Rias here. And Ember already trying to find those redirect plays off the wall there. And uh, Genzo now with the clear all the way to the blue side, leaving to Ember now. Just with the necessary touch, pushes it over there, trying to find his teammate Charm. Would he get that shot? Necessary. And Genzo, oh. what a stay from the mount, what a solid play. Uh, can we get golden gloves as a reward for this boy? Because <laughs> my yes. god, does he deserve it for that save there. And you don't want to go down early in a game of this magnitude. Um, everything's on the line here. Every mistake hurts you now. Oh, this could be in! It's not going to be great play by Genzo. They had a secondary person back as well, and that's a good sign for Alpha. Uh, with the rotation as strong as that, it might be very tough to score on this game. I would imagine there's not going to be as many goals as we saw last game, as both teams' defenses are going to get very tight. And uh, they're gonna be not. They're not gonna be like you know, we've seen the offensive plays come out, but they're not gonna exactly uh, pull out this. You know, pull out the plays that we've been going for the last couple of games now. Uh, there's no time for that because uh, it's cultured kick. It's do or die, and it might have been do or die. <laughs> die there for a second uh, for uh, Team Rias as Genzo just misses the goal and pushes him. But that might be something we might see. It might be a foreshadow for something for Team Rias. They might need to shut that down. And what is the play there from Genzo? Saved off from Ember, cleared it off, and that man was going to double tap into his own goal there. That would have been a truly heartbreaking moment, but just pass it off to Charm there. Charm, what will he do with the ball? Keeps possession, and Ludix, wow. no! Unfortunate for Ludix. He does get to uh, just see the pressure coming off from Ember. What a play from the man. He focused on the bump overall, and that's what you like to see. You know, disturb the rotation, and disturb the rotation he has, because Charm, what a beautiful flick, and no man on red, on pink to be found for Fearless Alpha as a sufferer goal. One goal for the better for Team Rias, and it's still three minutes, 30 seconds left from the time. Yep, and it's now only heartbreak available. Uh, at this point, it would be heartbreaking for Rias to lose this with three minutes left, the reverse sweep in order. And it's gonna be awkward here. He's gotta get up, he does well. Ember does very well there. Great control by Masuto as well. He gets the reset, and M M Minty comes in and absolutely destroys him on that one. And Genzo's gonna clear the lines. He gets another touch. Is anybody there to finish? Oh, it could be Anderson! 1-1. One, one. That was just beautiful. What a play from Genzo. And uh, that was absolutely unreadable from Masuto because that pinch was just so odd. I've was. never seen something like that happen because uh, that was a necessary play there from Team Fearless Alpha nonetheless and they've tied up the game. Good response back and this might be a kickoff. Oh no, not, not enough power from Genzo there. He came out at an awkward angle, leaves the possession over to Ember who clears it off into the air. Oh, oh, this, what a shot! Oh my days, unfortunately, Sam Charm uh, just takes possession and keeps it out. And keeps oh, what a fake. Oh, now what will he do? That was exactly what a good pick, man. Good flick. And Masudo was looking for that passing clip from his teammate. And Minty now with a clear off into the blue side. And will he be played off? No one pushing for him. Just missing play. And Charm completely missing the ball. Ember, thankfully for him, his teammate was able to get there to the ball. And now Ember screened off the backboard there. Good control off into the middle. Minty keeps it there in the blue side. Masudo pushing the ball back. And uh, now it's all about midfield oh. control, which team will play it on. And Masuda with a good demo, already trying to disturb those rotations. Trying to make those opportunities for Rias right now. And that's another good 50 from Genzo. Ludic's now with the ball, and Genzo nothing in his tank. They can't make a consecutive play. And Ludic said, I'll, don't worry, I'll do everything. Leave it into my hand as now this man is just playing for aggression. As Charm suffers another 50 on Minty. Can't do much and also suffers a bump as well at the same time. Now Masuda... Force on 50 with Ludix and Ember clears it down middle to Masudo. Will he get the player and push it for him? Can't do much, but we're seeing a good uh, transition from both counterattacks and defensive plays from both teams right now. Yeah, we are. And you know what we're going to have to start looking for, which I've noticed a little bit here, is a couple more fakes are being thrown. 
here, and it's uh, starting to disturb the rotations a little bit. And I wonder if a fake is going to be what decides this game because they played fast for almost five games in a row. A great bump! This could be in! It's going to be off the backboard, and Masuto gets it clear. It's going to be back into their end, and it's going to be a good play by Genzo. And then Masuto's back on it again. Good read by both players there. Char puts it on net! Off the crossbar! Masuto turns on this! Off the crossbar, and they're right back into the middle of the field. Wow, what great play, and Charm's going to take a touch. He gets it back in, and the pressure's back on. Minty's going to have to do something good here. Oh, he does fake. He gets over to Masuto. It's going to be in. Oh. Wow. What a fake in the corner there. We're going to have to take a look at this again, Ground Zero. That was gorgeous. Oh. That Minty just missed a necessary touch on the ball there. That demo was absolutely amazing. We created a smokescreen effect. We're playing CSGO yeah. now. as that, yeah. that was perfectly timed. From Team Rias, and uh, unfortunately for them, unfortunately for Fearless Alpha, supposed to watch that ball goes into their net, and what a play from Ludix wow. that this man is popping off right now, even with a zero boost, what touches, what reads, and oh my days, what a shot from Genzo, necessary power there, but just couldn't get that necessary shot into the goal, good defense from Rias, let's get Ooh. another demo on Charm, and Genzo completely missing the ball, that was a very irregular moment oh, from no. my man on Fearless Alpha, good save from Ludix, and it's just a save there, oh. just a save there from Heartbreak for uh, Alpha there, but the ball still mounting pressure uh, is Vias uh, right now. This might be the play there from Genzo all the way into the blue side to his team again. Ludix and Minty just try to get a shot there. Good save from Ember once again. 20 seconds left on the timer. This might be the biggest Heartbreak and the, one of the best reverse sweeps I've ever seen in my life. Genzo there, 50 off from Ember in the middle. Minty demoed by Masudo and last 8 seconds left. Something is gonna happen, and I don't know what. It's a chemical reaction right now, and that chemical reaction, it seems to me, is about Surely to die. That ball. Surely Still not. In the air. Ludix, does he have the boost? Oh, it's no, down that... here. No, it's Ooh. not. No, it's down. Uh, it's over. No, the okay. reverse sweep. The reverse sweep. Oh my goodness, and I don't care what league you play for. I don't care if you care about this league or not. A reverse sweep is exciting at any level, and if you don't like it, I don't care what jersey you wear, what sport you watch, you're not a fan of competition. That is just an amazing, amazing reverse oh sweep. It had me in my heart the whole time. Absolutely amazing. I was absolutely on the edge of my seat there can i just say that this is possibly one of the best reverse sweeps i've ever seen in my life because there was just so many ups and downs we've seen the character development from both teams right now fearless alpha starting off as a strong one you know rias we've we talked about them this was a david versus goliath story and it seems to me that david has won today and that david is rias taking the game out and they got the necessary goal Masudo the hero of today's story in game five on champions field for team Rias as they've done it two to one and the fearless alpha unfortunately for them will suffer a defeat but what a game for both teams here and can I just say it was an absolute honor for casting today for these teams yeah it's a pleasure to be at the booth uh, in the booth with you as always um and uh going forward we have another game up next so don't go anywhere guys uh because you don't want to miss that um, Champions Field had a record in attendance, 841,000 people for that Game 5, and we just keep building more and more people. You know what they say about Game 5s at Champions Field? Free hot dogs for everyone today. Everyone gets a coupon, so that's great from RSC to be funding that. Uh, what a great organization in general. Um, and I have to say, there should be no hate towards RSC. It's really well run, and I love it. I love it, Potter. Don't you dare. That being said, uh, Ground Zero, this is our sign-off, and I can't wait to the next one. Exactly, and I can't wait uh, whenever we pop on for another couple of casting right now. I hope to be with it, to be in the booth with you once again, sir, win a lot. But it is the end for me today. I will be hopping off. Good evening to everybody, but don't go anywhere as there are there is one more game. Good luck to y'all. Take care and peace. See you guys.
everybody and welcome along to RSCEU. We're here for more master playing playoffs depending on what you want to term this other round one. But it is Dogon, uh, Dojon versus Hades in this upper bracket. The round one, I'm Tom Dillon and alongside me for this evening is the ever wonderful Ice Ice Davey. And uh, Davey, we saw a very interesting series last time out about an hour ago. That one went to a game five. Dojon versus Hades in the upper bracket seems to be an equally as evenly matched affair. Absolutely. We've just seen an insane reverse sweep from Rias Legion, ending the plucky run of, of Fearless Alpha with their sub coming in. Uh, and play all three players performing extremely well, but they just couldn't quite overcome the reverse sweep against Rias Legion. But you know those two matches there have shown what this master tier is about, is all about, and hopefully Dogon and Hades can live up to that in this upper bracket round one match. So neither team is eliminated in this in this match, but one team will remain on two lives as they go into the play playoffs on Saturday. The other will drop into the lower bracket. So it's a, it's a huge match for the, both teams' ability to make the grand final come Saturday evening. Yeah, and of course, we know just how much of, uh, well, just how much of an advantage that upper bracket does give you when it comes to Saturday, even if you aren't going to, uh, even if you aren't going to actually uh, go all the way through the upper bracket and do dip down to the lower bracket at, uh, on occasion. So, 44 wins for Dojon, 43 for Hades, one was enough for second. And one was enough for third, 28 and 29 at losses respectively. These two sides, though, much separated in their goals for column. 191 Davy for the Dojon side. So it's going to be perhaps a bit of a difficult one for this Hades to, or for the Hades to, uh, to try and avoid being peppered, I think. Yeah, perhaps. I think the stats read very similar. There's. You know, they've scored less, but they've conceded less. Otherwise, in all measurable stats, these teams are remarkably similar. I think one of the key things I want to want to highlight for, for the Dogon team is their record in the season was 9-7-2, and two, which you go, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty good. But they haven't lost a series since week two. So they are unbeaten in seven weeks of league play. It's nearly three. It's coming up to three months since this team tasted defeat in league play. And whether that turns into, you know, playoffs, play-ins, hit different. It's a best of five series. It's entirely different. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if they can keep that run going. You can't draw a best of five. So whether the Dogon team can push on and get the win or not. But I think one of the key things from this Hades team looking at the, the player stats is Jushu, uh, who I believe is playing tonight. There was some speculation that he may not be. Um, based on the fact that I believe he resides in the Middle East somewhere. So is you know, three or four hours ahead, depending on where you are right now. Uh, so it's a very late night for them. So, but I believe they are playing, which could be absolutely huge for this Hades roster. You can see the impact that, that Jushu has with the saves, nearly hitting 100. 67% goal participation as well. Clearly one of the key players in this, this Hades roster. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, well, if you look at the Dojon roster as well, there's uh, a few guys over there that stand out to me. Captain Quark, probably uh, the most of them. 68 games played, 63 goals. That is a pretty impressive record, particularly uh, as he's the only player to play upwards of 50 for this side. Flo uh, being the pretty designated substitute here, I think, if we look at that roster. But uh, Dave, I think we're ready to move on to our predictions for the series ahead of us. And uh, I uh, have gone 3-1 to the side of Dojon. I don't think you've been uh, quite as optimistic, though, for the side that are <laughs> unbeaten since uh, week two. Look, there's something happening in this Might of Hazy's franchise. They've got their first tier win in their franchise history in RSC. You know, they've got they've had three teams now in a row competing in playoffs. Something's happening. In, in Senji's franchise, and I believe in this Might of Hades team. I just think with, with Jushu being able to play with the main roster out for Hades, I, I, honestly, I could make a case for all six results. But I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go for I'm gonna back Hades. I really think they can do this in this uh, one-off best of five upper bracket round one. But without further ado, let's get on with this as we go into game one on Manfield Night. 
we've got all the players in the lobby. It looks like we've got Captain Quark, Flo, and Average for Dogon. And we've got Heinz Ketchup, Rose Blushes, and Jushu joining in from the Hades roster. So two very strong looking teams out tonight, which is very, very good to see. But take us away, Tom, with game one. Dogon in the blue and Hades in the red. Flo will take it to the right hand side for Storm. I think an interesting point you made, Davey, is the fact that you can make a case for all six results in this one, if you were to analyse the stats enough. But it is Dojon who have the first attack here and first flurry of shots. Not shots, but first flurry of pressure into opposing half. But here goes Hades trying to bring it forward into the centre. It will go off with a backboard and average has to clear this one away. This is downfield. Flo will take a shot, but out of boost, not able to do much with it. And Rose Blushes with the first save of the evening. Yes, good early pressure this from the Dogon team. Flo looking to get up early here, but Jushu getting aggressive. He, I think he's got the second highest demos in the tier, so expect aggression from Jushu as well. But yeah, this uh, Hades team getting the ball out deep, out long. But yeah, the Dogon side up, challenging early into the middle, flows up to Reed. He gets oh, a bit disrupted by his teammate. Unfortunate there, they had a goal opportunity for this Dogon side to take the lead. But flows dropping it down in the middle. Average doesn't want to commit and gets bumped out for his troubles. But again, this Hades side are really struggling to clear their lines here. And that looks like it's going to be the first goal of the series. Average coming in, punishing the Hades side for being unable to clear the backboard read Jushu grounded maybe hasn't got enough boost just can't quite get up to the shot and it's a clever finish from average out of reach and it's an early lead for Dogon with just over a minute gone very early lead indeed here goes Captain Quark looking to get to the kickoff he will do he will come off with the backboard blushes will bring it away to the left hand side try and create something for a teammate not really doing much yet this falls nicely for Captain Quark who takes it Quite early, glances it wide in the end. Central we go once more. Court keeps this one alive. Dojon putting on incredible pressure early on into this game. Here goes Court trying to challenge for it. And no, it's brought away. And now Ketchup sends it downfield into Rose. Blushes takes the first shot for the Hades side. Jushu tries to keep it alive. Blushes has a second stab at it. And it's not quite able to find the net just yet. Rose Blushes one shot, one save at this stage in the game. Into the center once more. Average brings it away. Now he's trying to go to the right hand side where Flo will create an opportunity. Not able to do much with it and Jushu has a chance now down the left hand side. Yeah, some clutch defence from this Dogon team coming out. Quark is up early looking to get the read here but Heinz Ketchup's back looking to take the ball out of defence. Looking to find a teammate but again challenged early quick by Dogon. They're looking to shut down any plays but that's a lovely passing play there to the team. But the average is up to make the save. And again, clutch defense coming out from Dogon, really stalling this Hades attack. And average is there to marshal that backboard. Thanks, looking for the touch inside. This should be a goal for Jushu, but he can't quite get the power and allows Court to come back with the save. But this Dogon team, again and again, finding those saves on defense. The pressure is starting to mount from this Hades roster. But can they find a breakthrough? As Quark bangs it into the midfield. Jushu's up. Heinz is reading it off the backboard. Looking to put Spectre to shot in the field. Rose Blushes finds the pass inside. But again, just lacking that power on the shot. Allows Quark to get back and clear. You feel like this Hades team. The, the net's closing in. The goal is at their mercy. But they just can't quite find that final touch. Here's Quark trying to put almost the game to bed. You'd sense for the minute and 45 to go. Flo now going off the backboard into the centre. Average gets there, but so... Does Rose Blushes and Hady survive for the time being? Here's going to catch up downfield over the top and Average just able to get there. Now Quark twirls through the air to try and get to it. Keeps going here. Jushu clears it central. And eventually Rose Blushes goes downfield. Jushu takes the shot and there we go. Leveling the game for Hades. Jushu contention and discussion as to whether he was going to play tonight. And I think it's just about worth it that he did. Passing play there, Rose blushes to Jushu off the wall into the net, just evades the clutches of flow on the line. But again, he felt like that was coming. Hades were building the pressure after a little bit of a nervy start to game one, but they'll feel right back in it now with a minute and 20. And this really is anyone's game one. Such an important game to take to really build that momentum into a series. Here we go with Heinz Ketchup looking to find the pass off the back wall, up early, challenging, not allowing them time to clear from Rose blushes. Unfortunately, the teammate's not quite on the same page, and this Dogon side can really try to build an attack. As Jushu 
looking to intercept the ball in midfield, but Cork's up early. I don't think I've seen Captain Cork make a bad touch this game, really. He looks really on point, looking to get those reads in nice and early, getting the clutch saves in, and there's a shot off the post by Rose Blushes, punishing the touches in their own defence from Dogon. Again, it comes across midfield, and it's all in from Kite to catch up all the way. It looked like it might be saved. It might be Rose Bushes' goal, but it goes straight in from Hyatt's catch up off the wall. And ah, oh, scramble Flo just finds himself in the in a bit of a dodgy position on the goal line. And ah, from 1-0 down, this Hady side have come back all the way to lead this game 2-1. Don't trust the process comes to mind at the moment as the crossbar is where this one He's headed foot for Rose Bushes. Downfield we go. Juju will try and bring it away. Yeah, Fridge puts it into contention and Rose Bushes gets back and will bring it away. Out to the right hand side. Flo keeps this one alive. Takes a shot and it's 2 2. With 22 seconds to go, it was put in at the near post in the end. Watch this again. Off of the corner. Read it. Hold the pressure from Juju. And it looks like we might just be going to overtime. I've got a feeling Flo got a bit of a bit of a bump there from Jushu to get in the position there. I'm not sure he would have made that touch if he hadn't got that bump. So, you know, what a heads up play from Flo there to get to get in that position. But maybe a little bit of uh, what Hades doing there to help out with that with a little bit of an assist. But as we approach the last 10 seconds, we might be getting our first overtime of the series. There's nobody back here for this Hades side. And Average with four seconds to go finds the open net. Where was the defence going? They thought Heinz Ketchup would get the touch, but he's 50 to oblivion by average, who finds the finish. And that could be the dagger in game one for this Dogon side. Well, no overtime by the looks of things, and let this kickoff can be very good. Can they find something? Ketchup will take the last shot of the game, oh. it's on the buzzer! And we are going to overtime! That is how you kick off. Unbelievable. Unbelievable is the word was cold as ice from Hyens Ketchup. I was going to save this to game five, but he's just sourced all over them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the only time I'm going to use that. But what a what a goal from the kickoff. Oh, can we get another one? No. Okay. <laughs> Straight away. We're going to settle in, hopefully, into this overtime now. But what a play. We thought it was an overtime at 2-2. We thought it was over at 3-2. But Hady said, not today, with the buzzer beater off kickoff. Unbelievable. This master tier has delivered tonight so far with these games. And again, I've got no idea which way this is going to go. But at the moment, that's a neat looking pass from Hyde to catch up. Looking to get the touch on the pre-flip, but he can't. And Average should clear this off his own backboard. It's a nice touch, but Jushu's there to keep the pressure up. Gets up, waits for Cork to commit, beats one. Jushu across. Rose blushes with a touch. And that's an incredible assist from Jushu, baiting out the touch from Cork on the wall here. Pauses, waits for the touch, gets the flip, gets the double touch, and Rose blushes, finds a slightly awkward finish, but it works. And Hades take game one from, I mean, it looked like they'd lost with four seconds to go. We all probably thought it, but they have come back with a zero second tying goal and then to win in overtime. What a game one we've just seen. It started very nervously. Uh, it felt like it was going to be a bit of a slow burn at this one, but it just ignited in that final minute. It did ignite in that final minute and by extension of that into the final 10 seconds of the game. That was unbelievable from Hyde's catch up to save. He didn't get the most points on his team, only by a small margin at 4-2-8. But he did get probably the most important goal of that particular uh, game. And uh, well, moving into the second one, I apologise. I've got something going on in my uh, kitchen apparently. But anyway... I'll try and focus on the game. We've got going into game two. You said that game one, uh, Davey, was actually the most important game. Uh, or one of the most important games to win. I'd contend that this is the best game to lose as well, if you'd agree with that. Yeah, I think I think, I think game one is, is important to establish your mark on a series. But it's not do or die if you lose it. There's still time to come back. It's then just puts that extra pressure on game two. So from a Dogon roster now... They've got to step it up. They didn't play that game badly at all. I think Flo was perhaps caught a little bit on defense a couple of times with the rotations. But generally speaking, Dogon did not play a bad game there. It just came down to some insane touches and insane assists from Jushu. And there's a bump play by Roses off the kickoff, just as I'm praising Jushu. Heights catch up with a nice 50 off the kickoff. Rose blushes a lovely touch there and goes to the bump on Flo. 
and takes the goal lead in game two. It only took four seconds. That's about all the time they had at the end of game one to score. You know, you just can't leave four seconds on the clock for these guys. They are going to take advantage of it. And that's, it changes the complexity of game two. This, this Dogon side really needs to step forward now and look to increase the pressure on offense because the Hades team will be buzzing right now. Absolutely, as here's Jushu trying to get around to this one, into the centre it goes, he brings it away and out to the right hand side, has to challenge with Quark, does do so but not able to do anything really in terms of going forward, now Rosebush is trying to go forward once more, Jushu will keep it alive, Average has to swoop around to it, where Heinz Ketchup meets him on the wall, he goes into the centre now but there's no teammate there, everyone rotating back, it'll go down as shot credit but it is still Hades who have the lead in this game too. Here they go once more into the centre from the corner and Jushu not quite able to get round to it and to tap it in. Here goes Heinz Ketchup though. Average brings it away once more. It's incredible pressure at the moment from Hades who's still press here as this one's staved by Captain Quark. Now a chance for Rosebush. He's off of the side wall. He goes. Average will take it forward once more. Quark can't do much with it and Ketchup having to clear back downfield here he goes creating yet more pressure Hades are not looking back at the moment yeah Hans Ketchup was given a lot of time to make that play there and I think that's one of the things this Dogon side needs to stop you need to get in the faces of this Hades team early to stop some of these plays because they're they're conceding some of these infield passes Rose blushes to Jushu has been a lethal combination so far this series and I think that Dogon side just really need to up this pressure and Quark's up early dropping it down but neither of his teammates wants to commit to that and Rose is up to challenge the ball in the corner. Flo just about missing that touch, but Average gets it clear. Jushu looking to drop it in midfield, follow his own touch to get the 50, but it doesn't really go in his favour, and Flo looks to looks to chase downfield. So it's all played very high. Oh, it's going all the way in. Where's the rotation from this Dogon side gone? And Rose is able to find the boomer from her own corner all the way downfield. And Average is trying to get there. He's squeezing, he's trying, but he can't make it. This car's not quite big enough, and ah, that's a two-goal lead. Something they haven't had the luxury of this series. Can they make it count? Can they hold on to it? And can this Dogon side start upping the pressure? Because at the moment, Hades seem fairly unflustered, and the passing plays, just as I was about to hand it to you, come out again between Rose and Jushu. One, two, three, bang in the top corner and that is teamwork personified that is the communication that's the chemistry on display from this Hades team well that's exactly how you do it isn't it here goes average though cheating the kick off rose bushes has to get to it in the air and does do so the flow will maybe have a sniff at this one rose bushes glances it back downfield looking for the backboard read is juice into the center it goes ketchup can't get to it rotating back in maybe no it's cleared away and out of centre field now Dojon can start to attack their first real pressure of this game too. Actually only the one shot so far, might be a second here for Average, but it won't be. It'll be cleared back downfield. Here goes Jushu now getting the beating of Flo, looking for the double touch. We'll have to find Blushies instead. Now Ketchup goes up for the shot off the backboard once more and no one wanting to put it in just yet on this occasion. Here goes Flo downfield. It's a strong 50. Average going into the centre, cleared away once more. Ketchup trying to take it away does do so has to get the beating of flow won't get the beating of flow and blushes has to clear it back downfield for jushu who trying to make an attack not quite able to do so just yet if this was a boxing match you'd be you'd be really looking at dogon going you haven't really landed any punches yet and yet this this hady side just looks like they're going to create a chance every time they come forward the passing plays the solo plays uh, it's just it, the synergy in this team is looking on point right now as they're really looking to pen this this Dogon team out. Can't get out. That's a nice touch though by average. Can he read his own touch off the backboard? Yes, he can. And that might be the spark this Dogon size needs. There's two goals to find, 90 seconds to do it. Average doing all of the work here, reading his own touch off the backboard with a lovely dunk out on the side wall. And that could be the catalyst for this team coming back into this match. Maybe. We'll wait and see though, because with a minute and a half, that isn't a great deal of time to break down a side as good as Hades in the Master Tier. This one's falling awkwardly and Flo has to clear it away. Let's just do so rather diligently in the end. 1 minute 17. This will be challenged by Rose Blushes, who takes the shot and it might just sneak in at the corner. He'll have to take a second stab at it, but it's coolly done in the end. If I'm going to miss the first one, you bet I'm going to score 
per second. That's exactly what Rose Blushes did in its 4-1 with a minute and 12 to go. And I think now that it might just be Hades who take the game to, for sure. Calling that with a minute to go. Oh, I, I'd expect we'd have seen some of the insane matches we've seen over the last weekend or week or so. You just never really know what's going to happen in these matches. There's so much Rocket League left to play in this match, but it just doesn't feel like this Dogon side are going to find what it takes. Just as I see that, Average has put his team in his backpack and said, no, thank you. I'm here to play with another solo finish, a lovely double tap off his own backboard touch. And Bridge has really stepped up this game. Just his teammates haven't quite followed him and they've conceded the four goals which should really, really obviously cost them in this game. But, oh no, don't, no, okay. <laughs> Here we go, though God, I think you, you may have just jinxed this, Tom, when you said it was over at 4-1 with the flow off the kickoff, getting the read down, bar down and in, a lovely finish and momentum is shifting, you feel now, with 50 seconds to go, just one goal to find. That uphill task has suddenly got a lot <laughs> and it just keeps coming. Kickoff goal after kickoff goal. What is happening to Hades here? Ah, that's just an awkward kickoff. An average is there to punish on the cheat. And uh, I'm going to hand the casting back to you. And I'm going to say we're in a very different position when you last spoke. Actually, I just want to give an apology, first and foremost. <laughs> I couldn't have said a safer thing at 4 1 with a minute to go. Here we are with 40 seconds to go, and it's 4-4. Four, four. It's incredible. <laughs> Here goes Iron Petrol to the left-hand side. Looks for a reset. He's going to find it. Can Hades save a little bit of their pride? No, Average with a very strong save here. Jushu looking to go forward. Quark will bring it away to try and complete what will be one of the more spectacular comeback wins you'll see in a single game of Rocket League. Average keeping it alive. Quark is there to try and redirect it forward. Flo is there, takes a shot, and it's a good save from Jushu, given the circumstances. Five seconds to go. Will it be a buzzer beater as we saw in game one or will it be an overtime as we saw in game one? And the answer is indeed the latter, David. Oh, so we're in a three all overtime and a four all overtime. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to take five games of this series, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> what an insane comeback. With a minute to go, I was with you. I, I didn't say it, but I was with you. I didn't see Dogon based on the first Three minutes. I didn't see them coming back into this into this match, but two kickoff goals, a minor capitulation from this Hades team. It has to be said, and we're going to afford it a chance to take this game to in an overtime. A chance I don't think they would have thought they had about a minute ago, and they're on top as we start the first 30 seconds of this overtime. Average looking to put the ball in the middle to read his own touch, but it's well cleared by Jushu. And again, the chances keep coming. You feel like this Dogon side is starting to find their rhythm starting to find their team plays, starting to find their pressure. And it's up to this Hades team to reverse the fortune. They can't see the kickoff goal this time. That's the positive. It's now got to be a goal from open play. Let's wait and see, because maybe Dojon were a little bit lucky with those kickoff goals. This time, Rose Bushes looks to find a teammate, drops it central. Heinz Ketchup has to keep it alive out of centre field. Comes Rose Bushes. Heinz Ketchup will try and force something off the right hand side but Flo clears it back downfield Average will give chase now he goes up for this one looks for a flip and he finds it and it was wonderful but it's not quite able to be turned in and this time once again there is a save and it's an epic save this time from Hades who now attack back downfield 130 into what is turning into a pretty lengthy game two over time Flo tries to clear it away Quark looks to go central Average is there he takes a shot and it's just enough of a touch to clear it away once more. Central goes flow. Rose Bushes brings it downfield. Jushu looks to take a shot. There isn't a teammate there. Average will clear it away. Rose Bushes gets round to it. Off of the corner. He goes in this time. Is there a teammate in a central position in waiting for it? And the answer is quite clearly no. Quark now looks to go central for a teammate. Finds it and flow scores. And the comeback is complete. Extraordinary from the Stoke on roster. Flo, I believe a previous all-star in the rivals tier, has made his way up the CMV rankings into Master and he's coming in clutch for his team there in overtime. It wasn't the five and a half minutes we had in, in the first series on stream tonight, but I could just feel our lovely streamer Morris Guy rolling his eyes, two consecutive overtimes. We talked in the green room about overtimes and we've had two of them so far and we could well see three more the way this series is going, but... 
I mean, we have to talk about Hades being fallen up and losing 5-4. Uh, that has got to be a bit of a kick in the teeth. It is one all in the series. It's not, you know, it's a best of three now. You've got to reset mentally. Again, knowing that in the first three minutes you played a far better game than Dogon did. You just got rolled in a bit of the train after the first goal with the two kickoff goals. It happens. You've just got to brush that off and hopefully the mentality of this team remains uh, fairly fairly good after after that insane comeback from Tokon. But what a step up from average. Really carried the team for the first two goals. Gave them a chance with two incredible solo plays. And yeah, game three suddenly becomes very, very interesting. Who's going to take that match point? Uh, and to be a little bit fair to Hades here, I think it is important to note as we go to at uh, Sovereign Heights, that they were slightly unlucky in that game. A couple of those kickoff goals uh, could have quite easily found a touch that wouldn't have quite set them up uh, so nicely. So I don't think it's panic stations just yet for them. But if they do uh, go on to lose this game in any sort of difficult fashion in a way that is, you know, perhaps a, a dominant performance from Dojon is here. Afrish takes a shot, Flo gets round to it, it's a total triple commit again and he takes the shot and scores. And this is what I'm talking about. This is where it starts to become a little bit concerning for this Hades roster. Oh, Ocean yeah. have woken up. It's a it's a brutal start to game three on Sovereign Heights. It's you know starts as it as it ended for for Do, Dogon. They've not lost any momentum. I did wonder if we might see a timeout from from Hades there. You know they they can save it obviously if they don't win this game. Uh, they, they can save it, but I just wondered, based on the way they lost that match, they might just take the time out to collect themselves. But they didn't. They wanted to carry on playing. And just seven seconds in, Flo finds the triple commit, open net. And it's up to this Hades side to find the answer. They've, they've shown the passing plays between Jushu and Rose Blushes in particular. They need to just go back to that state. They need to go back to trusting each other, back to committing themselves forward like they did in games one and most of game two. It's looking at a nice pass across from Flo, but a really clever pre-jump save by Jushu, reading Flo's top corner shot. And again, it's this, it's still Dogon looking to attack and attack. Quark in the corner, beating one. Jushu's up to read, should get a nice clear on this, and does. Rose is able to chase, but Africh beats them both. Heinz back into the middle of the backboard. Rose looking to drop the ball down, but there's nobody on the left side for the team to meet the ball. And Flo's here looking to get the dribble, but easily challenged out by Heinz. It just seems like the pattern of play is you know, back and forth here. That's a lovely shot from distance from Rose Blushes again. Beats the outstretched defender. Quark's beaten on the wall by Hans catch up. And Rose finds the touch. Beats the extended average. He can't quite get there. And that's one all. That's an important goal you feel for Hades to not let this game run away from them after the game two. Absolutely the uh, ever important game three that sets up those two match points for whoever is going to take it. Nadie's well and truly back into it. Here goes Ketchup chasing it down. It's an awkward touch. Sets up for Ketchup himself off the backboard. It goes Rose Blushes gets there and the game is turned around once more. And Hades had to dig deep for this. And it's definitely, definitely not over, I dare say. It's going to be difficult for them, though, to uh, hold on to this lead now, I think, is the important thing, David. Absolutely. I think we've seen three all and four all over times. So I somewhat think the scoring is not over yet in this game. But Rose Blush has got a hat trick in game two. He's already got two goals in game three and has really stepped up uh, for their team, uh, looking to be that goal scoring threat. And you just see that all six players on this side have the mechanics, the individual skill. It's going to come down to those team plays, those individual moments those mistakes, those overextensions that we saw for the goal there as he chases the demo, a bump play into the save as well, it's all getting a bit chaotic in defence here, but they survived as Hades roster and they look to counter again, there's no third man back average to extend and get the save off the post, and it's all very frantic end to end stuff from Hades and Dogon delivering on this master tier play in Thursday it continues, and we've had banger series after banger series, and this is just yet another one I hope everyone's entertained at home, because I sure am. Absolutely. These up around ones always deliver very, very entertaining contests. Here goes Rose Bush. It's off of the right-hand side, chasing this down. 
in a forward position. Jushu now going into the center for Rose Blushes. Can't quite get the touch on Captain Gorg. And there might be a little bit of an overcommit here. If he can get it into average, he can't. It's a good touch from Rose Blushes, but back out to flow. And the goals just keep on flowing, if you'll excuse the pretty fours. But that was nice, and he wasn't going to miss that one. I don't think. Yeah, the, I, I, I was waiting to you. I, I wish I'd thought that punt to be honest. That's quite a good one. I like that. Um, yeah, I think I think both teams seem very keen to be very aggressive with their third man. There are a number of times in the first three games we've seen defenses scrambling back to make saves from long clears, and both sides are really aggressive with their third man. And uh, that's an unfortunate fifty from the eighty side and flow. Gets another goal, Quark here, just getting the 50, and Flo with the easy finish again for his hat trick. And yeah, so this the scoring doesn't stop. Defense is very much optional in this series, and it feels like with the way that the third bands are playing, they're both sides are content with that fact. It's going to be who could score. Uh, we'll, we'll score more than you, not we'll keep our defense nice and sturdy. Average here gets bumped by his own teammate. That will stop the. Attack really in his tracks and Juju will gain possession in his own corner. Flo though will take it away out of the red corner. Sets it up for Average quite nicely. Who has a teammate in support in the centre. Rosebush just has to challenge. Gets a bump rather than the ball. And it's enough to bring Hades back into this game. Down the other end with an attack. Flo's going to get a good challenge in. However now Blushes takes a chance. Juju has to go to the left hand side. Flo will bring it away. Challenge with Ketchup who sends it into Rose Blushes who takes a shot. And it's going to be yet... Another goal, six goals in this game three. There have been countless goals in the first two games and you're starting to sense and I'm going to cast a curses because I think everyone will thank me. Sense that maybe there's going to be another overtime. <laughs> it just feels inevitable no matter what happens in this final minute. But we've had two hat tricks, one from Flo, one from Rose Bushes and another shot on target. But Average gets the save and we've seen two players really step up with their shooting boots laced in this series so far. Rose has been in incredible goal scoring form, but Flo in the last two games got the crucial goal again. Three is off the post bar and in from Rose. The fourth goal they've scored in this series. And this one might just be the most important. What an incredible flick into the top corner. Finds its way off every piece of woodwork and into the back of the net. Um, I, that could be the most important, important one, but I want to emphasize the word could be. If you've been paying attention to this series so far, you will probably be thinking it's not over yet and you are right <laughs> because anything can happen in the last 40 seconds a lovely flick from throw off the backboard average with the read but can't quite find the top corner and time is running out for this stogon side as we hit the 30 second mark rose looking to challenge high up the field gets the win ekes more seconds off the clock as average is up to make the play quark quickly looking for that touch off the ceiling off the backboard it doesn't quite hit it doesn't quite drop and jushu can get the clear and up, not the right direction from average forces his teammate to extend backwards to get the play and with 10 seconds to go can Dogon fashion one last chance to take this to overtime average with a touch over can't quite beat the defender Quark's up but there's nobody there to read from his team a long clear from Rose blushes and oh Hades close out the series we avoid the overtime and what a comeback performance after that after that game two, the way it ended uh, must have hurt. Must have hurt the Hades team. You, you, you can't suggest it otherwise. But to bounce back, come back from a goal down, get the get the lead. Four goals for Rose Blushes, four assists for Heinz Ketchup, and well, <laughs> just this series has delivered goal an absolute goal fest. It, it has delivered a goal fest, and, and it's been nothing but that, hasn't it, uh, Captain Quark? has uh, left the match. I'm slightly surprised we haven't seen a timeout taken just yet from either of the sides. Hades obviously less likely to take one uh, than the others, but uh, well, again, a seven goal game is that as uh, Captain Quark joins the game and says GG, which I can only assume is some kind of mod thing that uh, he's got set up there, but uh, now Hades looking like this series might just get taken in this next game. However, the game five, an ever real possibility, David. Absolutely. I, I, I can't rule anything out at this point. 
Um, I just think it's two teams. Neither team has played poorly. There's been some mistakes in defense, but both sides clearly have a fairly disregard for the nature of the third man sitting back and helping that defense. That we've seen so many high commits, so many passing play attempts and bump attempts, and it's making for an incredible offensive match. But you know, both sides are costing themselves goals by not really respecting the third man rotation as much as you as you might expect. But you know, with both teams doing it, I think we've got ourselves a very entertaining series. And so far, it has delivered on every level. So far, we've seen insane goals, we've seen insane comebacks, we've seen insane overtimes. Uh, are we going to get a game five to reward us for what has been an absolute mammoth series so far? As Pinky Sat says, most underrated field. I'm not going to stand for, on a broadcast that I am on, anyone praising <laughs> this map of all places. As this one's glanced forward by Rose Blush, he takes a shot, Ooh. walk, oh, walk, control it, and controls it into his own net. and. Well, it was a wonderful, wonderful shot from Rosebush. He's slightly speculative, you'd argue. Quark couldn't get there, and as they just converged onto the ball, it was eventually going to find itself going in. Oh, agonising for Captain Quark. Got up to make the save. The touch was just... The, I think the ball just span backwards, and it just couldn't recover from that touch. And then she looks to get the 50 in the net, but can't quite find it off the post. And it's Rosebush's again said their name so many times in the goal feed and here's another one from Jushu with a solo play this Haiti side have come to say we want to shut this game down in four off the touch off the ceiling a lovely read from Jushu unchallenged and the defense can't quite come across in time and well this Haiti side have really taken this game four by the scruff of their necks but they had this kind of lead in game two and we all know what happened there so Dogon will not feel they're out of it. They will know that they can score goals. They've got flow on their team. They scored a hat-trick in game three. So there's goals in this team. They've just got to calm down, look for each other, increase that pressure again, and really shut down some of these plays that um, Rose, Blushes and Jushu are able to bring out before they can start. Here goes Flo into the centre. Average will take a shot. He's up with the backboard. Settle for Quark quite nicely, but he can't quite get it into the net and now Jushu brings it downfield. Average gets back to it. It's a pretty simple touch for a master tier player and now Quark wants to go forward. Flo will challenge for it. Jushu gets there first. Quark can't quite get to it and Average has to come and save his teammate ever so slightly for the time being. Flo can't get round to it. Quark can off of the backboard. It goes looking central and Rose Bushes takes it away. This is looking like it might just be an opportunity, but Rosebush is his calm under pressure, brings it away once more, goes through the air this time, all alone looks to take a touch, and that is tidy, tidy finish. That is goal of the day, quite comfortably, I think. What a goal. Unbelievable goal for Rosebushes. Again, I don't, has anyone else scored for this Haiti side in the last three games? I, I swear the goal feed has been Rosebushes the entire time. Stepping up, game after game for this Hades team and a full court dribble and there goes the fourth from Jushu Rose blushes with the assist again that combination the classic combination from game one that we saw average just can't quite get a meaningful touch it does that cardinal sin of putting it back in the middle needs to clear out to the side there and Jushu says thank you very much and it's a four goal lead uh, an unprecedented lead in this series but I come back to it again, we've seen enough goals from Dogon to know that this game may well not be over, but has the stuffing been knocked out of them? Has that full court dribble, the insane goal from Rose Blushes, ended this series? Oh, I was waiting for another play by Jushu there, like the mechanics are coming out. Let me just check his ping, it's 128, been fairly stable the whole game, but to do these kind of plays, to compete at this level with ping well over 100 is a feat in all itself so you know absolutely fair play to, to Jushu staying up this late playing this well on this higher ping you know all credit to 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 them but oh, what a pitch from Rose Blush off the side wall again showing they're capable of scoring really every type of goal here full court air dribbles and lovely pinches off the side wall two players committed to the clear and it's 5-0, and I'm still hesitant to call this game being over. I think the 
important thing here for Juice Shoot to mention is that when you're playing on only 28 ping, it's not a great situation. And to be fair, I'm sure if he was playing on, on local servers, he'd probably uh, quite like as this goal goes in from Alfred, maybe the start of a very interesting comeback trail from the Dogon side who are looking like they are facing defeat and a move down to the lower tier. But I think the point is when you're on 128 ping, as long as that is stable and there's no gremlins within this network, then you can actually get away with it. But it's having that trust and Jushu clearly has got that trust in these servers and has adjusted to it. It's quite remarkable. It would be interesting to see if he can do all of this with this ping, what he can do with some more European ping as Rosebush is, is going to make it for. To, I always bring out this little fact by some definitions. That would be classed as a double hat trick, but I'm sure two more goals for her <laughs> to make it an official double hat trick would probably be quite welcome. I'm no RSC statistician, but I'd love to know what the most goals scored in a, in a play-in or playoff series is by one player, because Rose Blushes must be coming close now. But that's four goals in the... at least four goals in the last game? I think it's four goals in the last game, four goals in this game, a hat-trick in game three, and, I, you know, this insane goal-scoring performance. And we really have seen every single type of goal from them, and it's just been... An unbelievable performance from this Haley side. After the way they conceded, I was about to say it at, at sort of at five-one, you know, four consecutive kickoff goals. What are the odds? But to shut them down with a minute to go, five goals is an incredibly tall order. And Rose blushes gets a bump to stop the clear, and it rolls through for Heinz's goal. But you can see she's looking for it. The aggression, the play there, looking to take Captain Cork out. And it's the Brazil with 54 seconds to go. And this Hades team look scary. They are looking scary. And suddenly they're looking like bracket contenders. Jushu now looking to take a shot. It will make it eight. And it's turned into an absolute hammering at the moment. Have but, mercy uh, on their souls. Yeah, you Let should. them surrender. <laughs> this is incredible stuff from Hades. And well, a team that never got to a grand final before that wonderful day in the rival tier. Got the bracket reset in the end in the most spectacular fashion. Inches away from defeat and literally inches away from defeat. But I'm sure you've all seen the clips and things of that. To have a chance here in the oh, master no. areas, it might be nine and then just continuing here and the Quick chats are starting to come out as well in this lobby. Juicy, what? you absolute monster. What is this? <laughs> oh but my to goodness. Have a chance at the Master Tier in what Senju has already said is going to be his final season as a GM. What that looks like for the franchise as to whether we'll continue to see them in RSC. I frankly don't know enough about it to tell you, but it would be so, so good for them. I'm, I'm in disbelief. I, I genuinely, what a chaotic series for it to end with a, well, I, I don't want to say end with a 9-1, but for it to 9-1, and it's not just Jushu, it's not just Rose Blushes, Heinz Ketchup turned up as well, there's been performances in every game from all of these players, you know, Heinz Ketchup had four assists in the last game, and Hades take the series 3-1, and I have absolutely no idea how to sum up that series, other than what an insane performance by Hades. What That game four was incredible. The goals that were scored are throughout the series. I, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. They could take even half this performance into Saturday. They will be, you know, other teams will be sitting up taking note now because they know the goals that can be scored. They know the team plays that can be brought together by this team. And I, I mean, help me out here, Tom, because I am... I'm struggling. But what a what a series! What a series! And uh, well, again, it was a series of four very distinct and different games. There you go. Hades getting revenge for the spectacular four-one comeback that happened against them. Let's have a look at the brackets then, uh, as we've only got one more game to come. Well, two more games to come actually uh, on Friday in this play-in bracket. We've got 
uh, Messiahs versus Infinity. That's the final game on Friday, so that would be tomorrow. Uh, wouldn't it then in the lower tier? We've got Abyss versus the winner of match two, then Inferno and Severance, of course. Actually, we've got three more games uh, coming up. That is tomorrow, and uh, then we'll, of course, get into Premier and things like that over the course of the weekend. But, uh, Davey, there's uh, actually one more thing as well. Essentially, said that they are going to try and keep Might of Hades uh, in the RSC, down to the admins, whether they'll accept the new GM or not. So, thank you, Senji. For, uh, for for letting us know that it would be wonderful, I have to say, and, uh, if we are to see this uh, th this franchise continue. But, uh, Davey, I'll ask for your final thoughts before we round out this broadcast. I mean, I've only just realised I got my prediction spot on as well. <laughs> I didn't even okay. realise. Yeah, I got, got the prediction spot on. I mean, the, I mean, the clue was in the name. Might of Hades, and the clue's there. Hades turned up and demolished... Dogon in game, game game four. It was a goal fest. It was back and forth for the other three games. Dogon put in a hell of a performance in those three games. But Hades are looking scary. And watch out for them on Saturday. And to all the teams playing tomorrow, you've seen the level tonight. You've seen what we're expecting to see. It's been chaos all night. A reverse sweep in game two. Fearless with an incredible run. Attempted run through the bracket. And that series there was just insane. But I need a break, and you guys all need to come back tomorrow at 7, C 7 GMT, 8 CET for Inferno versus Severance, where you can expect more of this kind of action. Absolutely. Thank you to the sponsors as well, who are just at the top of my head. It is the final week of RSC 11, and the question that we'll all be asking into the weekend is, can, can Hades continue to impose their mites on this master bracket, or will someone else Step up to the task. Good night. Stand. I love the air you bring everything